Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Dick Vermeil. Last week in the season opener, Washington won as expected over Philadelphia. Atlanta did not. They were trashed by Tampa Bay 48-10. And, Dick, it strikes me that this could be a mismatch. Well, I don't think it'll be a mismatch, but one of the toughest things for a head coach to do is to take a playoff-caliber team like the Redskins that's coming off a victory and play a non-playoff team, the Falcons, that lost by 38 points. It's a real test of mental toughness. But if anybody can do it, Joe Gibbs can. Well, Joe, G Joe Gibbs has been a little jut-jawed this week, but yeah, he, uh, he does have his team ready. More so than on a normal Sunday, the quarterbacks will occupy the focus of attention today. And for Washington, of course, Doug Williams gets his first start in the NFL in five years. Let's remember, Doug Williams could start for half the football teams in the National Football League. He's played in playoff games. As a starter, he has won more games than he has lost. And playing at Tampa Bay, that, you know, not many people can say that. He's beaten teams in the playoffs, including mine. He's a winner. A little bit of a surprise, Marion Campbell for Atlanta has benched his starter, Dave Archer, and he's going to go with Scott Campbell. Scott Campbell is not a proven starter, but evidently when you make changes in your quarterback this early in the year, Vern, it normally means you don't think you have a playoff caliber quarterback on your roster. Archer was their starter last year. They struggled in the opener. They're going with Campbell. They hope he can provide them a, strike, a little bit of a spark. And Scott Campbell will have a chance early on as Washington has... Uh, Lost the toss and getting ready to kick off. 74 degrees, 53 percent. Wind out of the northwest at 15, and mostly sunny skies, the forecast. Sylvester Stamps is the deep man, as Steve Cox, who put three in the end zone last week, does not this time. David Crudup for the Falcons across the 20 and down near the 25-yard line. And that means that Scott Campbell will get only his third start in the National Football League, his first in Atlanta. He was a former draft choice in the seventh round in 1984, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And there apparently was a fumble down at the bottom of the pile. And they've unstacked the bodies, and Atlanta will control it. Now, Scott Campbell. And here is the defense he will face. Charles Mann, Dave Butts, Daryl Grant, and Marcus Cook. The linebackers. The man to keep your eye on is the man in the middle, Rich Ballot, who was bothered by bursitis last night and was questionable right up to game time. And the secondary, Green, Wilburn, Bowles, and Walton. First down and 10. And flags. That's not a very good way to start out the first play at home, is it? No. <laughs> Illegal procedure. And, Dick, we do have a substitution at middle linebacker for the Redskins. Kurt Gavea, number 6 to 54 is starting in place of Rich Mallott. There's Gavea out of Brigham Young, spent last year on injured reserve. He was an eighth-round draft choice a year ago, but that's a really vulnerable spot for the Redskins because Neil Olkowitz, perhaps their best linebacker, is on injured reserve for six weeks. And Dexter Manley is not playing at 100% basis uh, throughout the defense. Maybe we'll see him some in the nickel pass rush. Darrell Grant is also hobbled by an injury. First down and 15. Wisenhunt, the H-back, lines up in the backfield. Gerald Riggs gets a handoff. High steps over the middle, gets the five back plus a few. Charles Mann, number 71, makes the tackle. Take a look at the Atlanta offense. Campbell, as we told you, is getting the start, only his third in the NFL. He is joined by Riggs and Wisenhunt, Arthur Cox, the tight end, and the wide receivers, Stacey Bailey and Floyd Dixon. And the offensive line, Mike Ken, John Scully, who had some problems last week. Wayne Radloff replaces Jeff Van Oak, Bill Freilich, and Leonard Mitchell, formerly of the Philadelphia Eagles, acquired in a trade for Mike Pitts. Second down and five. Play fake. Campbell will throw for the first time this afternoon. Goes deep. Man-for-man -man coverage. Almost picked off. Darrell Green, he of the uh, fast feet, Good coverage downfield. Good play action fake freezing the linebackers. Try to get it down there. That play action fake was actually used to freeze the safety and prevent Todd Bowles from getting over to help. And fortunately, Daryl Green can cover a guy that deep. He's got that blinding speed at that 10 flat and 100 meters. That's flying. Fastest man in the NFL a year ago. He chose to pass in the competition this year. Said he watched Ben Johnson set that 100 meter record in Rome. <laughs> And he got down in a starter stance in his bedroom trying to emulate. <laughs> Third down, five. Opening moments of the game from the shotgun, Campbell. Four-man rush goes deep left side. Caught. 
Aubrey Matthews. Second year man from Delta State. Shotgun formation, getting him a little time to get the ball off. Gets good protection. Stunts picked up, thrown over to the right side of your screen. Aubrey Matthews, number 83. Nice catch, beats him on the outside move. Big play. This could lift the Falcons right here. 37 yards on the play. Matthews at 5'7", 165. A slight youngster, but the fastest on this team with a 40 time of 4.37 seconds. And it's first and 10, Atlanta from the 33. This time it's Wizenon in motion, and the handoff to Riggs as they test the middle again. Spins out of the tackle, drives through another, and is down at the 22-yard line. Take a look at Riggs in the power at 232 pounds. Coming through, quarterback will reverse, handing the ball, man in motion, Wizenon Hunt, number 45. Hands the ball, stunt. Kaufman picked up number 55. Good. Now look at the power. Good balance. Late drive. Drops a shoulder pad. Runs right over 23. Todd Bowles. Physical mismatch. Great running by a fine running back. Gerald Riggs in 86 over 1,300 yards. He's put together three back to good years in succession. Just short of the first down. You know, Vern, he's one of the few thousand-yard rushers year to year that runs for a losing football team. That's right. Two-thirds of the people that run a thousand yards run for a winner. He's been running for a loser, but he doesn't get demoralized. And he's had his best days against the Redskins. The last two times they played, he rushed for 134 yards and 127 yards. There's a lot of coaching experience against the Washington Redskins on the Atlanta staff. You know, Marion Campbell, Rod Dauhauer, Jim Hennepin. Second, less than a foot. It'll be a play fake. Campbell rolls out, lobs it out to Wizenhut, the tight end of the H-back. Fumbles the ball, scramble. It'll be Atlanta's possession at the 15-yard line with a fresh set of downs. Take a look at 45 in the middle of your screen. Ken Wissenhunt. He's their H-back now. He's going to block down. Now, walk him ricochet off. Charles Mann, 71. He holds there just long enough to disguise his intention, then comes out. Now, let's tuck the ball away, Ken. Don't get it knocked out. There, a good tackle. Gets it knocked out by Barry Wilbur, number 40. No, that's Alvin Walton. Number 40 knocks it out. Put his hat on the ball. He had a tough day in practice on Friday. Dropped back-to-back -back passes. Yeah, he did. And they say he has the best hands on the team. First and ten. How'd you like to play call? Good call. Motion in the offensive line. Jumped on the left side. Mike Ken. You wouldn't think a guy with all that experience, ten years of experience playing left tackle for the Atlanta Falcons. Offense, number 78. Jumps offside. Five Pro Bowl. He's the only member of the squad that's been in all three playoff teams, and here he is jumping offside. Ben Dreith, our referee, second penalty against Atlanta, and that puts them back at the 20. Marion Campbell, defensive coordinator for Dick Vermeil at Philadelphia, and then the head coach there, super football coach. Outstanding. And Joe Gibbs knows what he's concerned about. First and 15. Two wingbacks with Riggs, the deep back, and now motion from the tight end. Campbell with a play fake again. Goes deep left side, overthrown. Stacy Bailey went up in the air for it. You never want to throw that slant pattern high and behind a receiver because the free safety is working over toward him, and it's lunchtime. You're just <laughs> at the mercy of the defensive back. Scott appears to be poised. He doesn't look nervous. He's coming in out of the huddle with good poise. Sets up nicely. I'm impressed. You know, he started against the Redskins a few years ago. When His first start in the NFL was uh, in a Pittsburgh uniform against Washington. Threw two touchdown passes. Second down and 15. No score. Early moments of the game. 13-10 to go. First quarter. Redskins threaten the blitz. They're coming. Campbell reads it. Hot receiver left side. Mix up on the pattern. That's so typical of Richie Pettibone defensive theory. You get you inside the 20-yard line. You're moving the ball a little bit. Create the the mistake, create the broken play, get after the quarterback, put pressure on him, sack him if you can, and make that field goal a little bit longer. Intended receiver was Stacy Bailey. It'll be third down. The prevent defense comes in for the Redskins now on third and 15. Steve Hamilton makes an appearance. to see if Dexter Manley is on for the first time this year. Yes, he is. Manley is in the lineup. Got on the field twice last week, but timeout was called both times. He didn't play. 
Campbell out of the shotgun. Pretty good protection. Deep left side intercepted. Picked off, and Barry Wilburn has his second pass interception of the year. He is supposedly the weak link. He got one last week. He gets one this afternoon as the pass was overthrown. Campbell into the arms of Wilburn. Defensive left end, number 71, Charles Mann, in the middle of your screen, comes off the ball, gets good pressure, coming around the outside of Leonard Mitchell, number 73. Now watch the rush. He keeps coming, keeps coming. The quarterback holds the ball, and there it is, gets a hit, and I think that just deflected the ball in the throwing arm enough to throw the ball erratically. Interception, Barry Wilburn. And Doug Williams is starting in the NFL for the first time since the last game of the last strike season, 1982. Williams hands it off to Keith Griffin, who's starting for the injured George Rogers. He is knocked down at the 33. Williams gets the start, and here's the defensive unit he'll face this afternoon. Mike Gann, Tony Casillas, and Rick Bryan. They all, need to get a pass rush. All first-round choices. Yes. They should be able to rush. Linebackers, Reggie Wilkes, Buddy Curry, John Rady, and Joel Williams. And the secondary, Bobby Butler, Scott Case, Kaysen, and Robert Moore. Small and quick. <laughs> It'll be second down and five. Ball on the 33. No score. One turnover so far. Don Warren, the tight end, comes left. Keith Griffin gets the handoff, spins through left guard, and has a first down for the Redskins across the 40-yard line. Take a look at the Redskin offense now. With Doug Williams starting in place of the injured Jay Schrader, Keith Griffin replaces George Rogers at the running back spot. Glenn Dennison, because Clint Didier's on injured reserve. Warren, Art Monk, and Gary Clark. Last three are just fine. Yeah, they can all play on my football team. Jacoby McKenzie, Grimm, starting with a back sprain. R.C. Thielman, the former Atlanta player, and the rookie, Ed Simmons, who did a good job last week. First and ten, Washington. Play fake, and Williams looks deep. Good defensive job by Scott Case, number 25. Really a good job, because he had no help underneath. The play action fake that they ran froze the linebackers. No help underneath. I'd say they're going to have to go deep quick on uh, Case and get him to back off because Gary Clark can fly. Atlanta has had just unbelievable problems in the defensive secondary the last three years. Three years in a row, they have lost a defensive back with a broken leg. Last week, it was Brett Clark, James Britt, Bobby Butler the two years prior to this one. Second and 10. 11.37 to go, first quarter. And Bryant weaves his way out near the 46-yard line. That's the old lag draw. That originally that play came out of the Baltimore Colts, where the fullback will lead, the fullback will lead through, the running back will slide behind and delay and run the draw. Follow the fullback as he leads through. Quarterback will reverse coming deep, right in the middle of your screen. Here he goes. Now see the quarterback will come around and hand it off behind there. Now see the fullback get the block. In this case, Warren at the fullback position. Four wide receivers set for the Redskins now. As Yarber is in the lineup along with Ricky Sanders and Williams drops back with good protection. Settles for the short man and a flag is down. We may have a roughing the passer call. Or holding. Atlanta feels they have to get more pressure. Last week, they did not get pressure. Atlanta last week stopped the run, and that might have been a mistake. Got him into the third and long situation, and That's right. they got eaten alive. Will foul on a defense 98, roughing the quarterback, 15 at the first down. Greg Brown, a former Eagle. Greg Brown, he knows better than that. Here he is, 98, on the right center of your screen, working on Joe Jacoby, 66. He works underneath him right there, makes a good move. Oh, crap. That really doesn't look like a real flagrant foul. I wonder if that's not an interpretation of the new rule protecting I'm sure the quarterbacks. I'm sure it is, and it's a good rule. You only get one step after the quarterback has the released ball. the ball. Now, he used to be able to take two. And he took more than two. He mm -hmm. took more than two. It just didn't look like he hit him very hard. You sound like you're still coaching him. Oh, no, I'm not <laughs> coaching him anymore. <laughs> I can tell a few stories in old Greg, I think. First down at the 34-yard line. No score in the game. 10-29 to go. First quarter. Griffin. Look at him bounce around. I love the way this kid runs. He runs with a lot of determination. Plus, he gives you something sometimes the big back like Rodgers can't give you. He has a little more flexibility in bouncing to daylight. The play does not have to be blocked perfectly. 
Those of you who are not familiar with it, he's Archie's little brother and Ray's little brother. Wasn't that interesting last night? He said he's so used to being and living in the shadows of people that are better, and he's still in that situation here, but he's making a good living. Second and two. Don Warren starts right, comes back left. And Griffin looks for room on the left side and doesn't find much at all. Redskins went in with a lot of players injured to the in the season opener, and then they really were decimated in the first half of last week's game. They lost Jay Schrader with a shoulder bruise. George Rogers, also a shoulder. He's been placed on IR. Jess Atkinson injured on his first extra point attempt on IR, injured reserve. And Russ Grimm had a sprained back. He is starting today. You know, Vern, that accumulates, averages out to be minus 15.4 points a game and losing that kind of offensive production in Schrader, in Didier, in Rogers. And in Didier, I really think, is a major loss because he is a big play guy. You expect... Art Munt to make the big plays, but Didier made him made that one back tackle all the more explosive. Didier went on injured reserve prior to the season, which means that he's got to stay out for at least six weeks. And there's Jay Schrader, who could hold today for extra points and field goals. Guy for no, Schrader threw for 4,100 yards last year. That's a lot of yards. Yes, that's a career for some guys. Yeah. Third and one from the 24. As you can prove, they were just short. Reggie Branch comes in. He scored last week. Fumble, Williams picks it up, dives for the first down, and it'll be close. Joel Williams and Wendell Casey. You know what happens in the short yardage situations many times when the quarterback fumbles is the offensive linemen are hunching and grunting down there to get down lower, and their tails sink away from the quarterback's hands and therefore cause the fumble. You'll see more fumbles in goal line, short yardage situations between quarterbacks and centers than at any other time because of that. Hmm. Well, he got, uh, got the first down. Williams only 66 sacks in 68 games. It speaks for his mobility and quick release. Griffin tests the middle again inside the 20. The big thing you don't want to do with the Redskins is allow them to score first. They are dynamite when they score first. If you want to beat them, you got to score first. Percentages are with you. Well, it looked like Atlanta was going to do that, Dick. They opened up with a 37-yard pass, got themselves a first down, but then Campbell was intercepted by Barry Wilburn on an overthrown ball. And this is Washington's first drive of the afternoon. Look at that. Score first. They're 39-3. and three. Wouldn't you be at just devastated if you were the head coach and saw those guys walk in for the first <laughs> touchdown and say, oh my gosh, the odds are against me. Second down and seven. Ball in the 19. They hand off deep and Griffin doesn't get much down to the 16. Michael Reed, number 95, came in at linebacker replacing John Rady and he made the tackle. Rookie out of Wisconsin, a seventh round draft choice. And now Reed will come out of the lineup. Last week, the, uh, the Redskins were scored all four times inside the 20-yard line. Three touchdowns and uh, a field goal. And there last week, Atlanta gave up seven touchdowns to Tampa Bay. <laughs> Matter of fact, three drives by the Buccaneers in excess of 70 yards to open the ball game. Third and five. Straight drop back. Williams, deep left side, man open. Touchdown, Washington. Kelvin Bryant. The key to this was the time that Williams was given to allow the running back 24 over here in the corner to get down there. Look at the time. Good protection. He's looking left all the way. No white jerseys in front of him. He has a nice pocket to throw from. Gives the time the running back to get down there on a linebacker and get in the foot race and beat Joel Williams, who is a fine pass coverage linebacker. Ali Hajishik, who kicked last year for Atlanta at the end of the year, is the new Washington place kicker. And he is good on his first attempt of 87. 72 yards, 11 plays. Seven eleven to go first quarter. The touchdown toss. Doug Williams, his third of 87 to Kelvin Bryant. And Steve Cox is on to pick off for the Redskins. Vern, that's what Doug Williams does best, though, is throw the ball deep. Mm -hmm. He's very accurate going deep for the football. And it's almost impossible to outrun one of his throws. Sylvester stamps on the return. Spilled at the 23-yard line. 
Doug Williams, who thought he was going to be a Raider this week, yeah. and the trade was uh, negated at the last second, leads Washington on an 11-play, 72-yard drive, 5 minutes and 46 seconds, and hits Bryant from 17. The remarkable thing about the job he did last week is during the week in preparation, normally the starting quarterback, and this is true in Washington, he gets all the work. The second quarterback only learns, learns by osmosis and chalk talk and film study. Doesn't take a snap. And to go in and do what he did, it just shows how valuable the experience is. First down and 10. Campbell will throw on first down. Looks right and fires that way. Has it. Out of bounds for first down, Stacy Bailey. First down, Atlanta. Let's go to New York now for this update on the 49ers Cincinnati game. All right, Fern, the Cincinnati Bengals strike first. Weish against the former master, Bill Walsh, if you will. And it was Larry Kennebrew plunging in for the first touchdown from two yards out. And it's 7-0 Bengals. Let's go back to Vern. All right, Brent, 7-0 there and 7-0 here. Vern Lundquist and Dick Vermeil in Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Second Atlanta possession of the first quarter. Just under seven minutes to go. Campbell left side. Whoa. Mel Kaufman almost had that one burned, and he would have walked in with that one. And he's intercepted seven passes in his career. He knows what to do with it. <laughs> That's the kind that keeps you awake on road trips back home on the plane. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that was on IR last year with a torn Achilles, and here he is. You know, there was a time when you tore your Achilles, you never play again. It just shows mm -hmm. you how modern medicine is. Then of all the crazy years. things last week, Dick, he suffered a pinched nerve in his back two days before the game and was hospitalized. <laughs> so put him in traction, and he played all last week against Philadelphia. Second and ten, Atlanta. They try to reverse. Dipsy Doodle going left. Floyd Dixon fumbles, picks it up, and gets to the 35. I think on that reverse, they saw Marcus Cook, 74, coming, and instead of watching the ball at the point of exchange, he was looking at this big gorilla coming right at him, number 74, Marcus Cook. Marcus Cook starting in place of Dexter Manley because of the knee injury that Manley suffered on the 8th of August. 3 nothing New Orleans with an early lead over Philly. That's one thing New Orleans can do is kick field goals. Huh? Morton Anderson. The best in there is. Yes, he is. Buffalo field goal lead over Houston. Green Bay on top of Denver. Steve Griffin comes into the lineup now along with Sylvester Stamps on 3rd and 11. Holding it. No flag is down. Sylvester Stamps is, and he's short of the first down. <laughs> Monty Coleman was holding Sylvester Stamps coming out of the backfield to the, the left side of the offensive formation, the right side of your screen, the wing back to the top right. You'll note him come out now. Center snap, shotgun, he'll come out. He's going to work over here to the right side of your screen. He's being held right there. The official didn't see it. I saw that. Here he broke loose from the grass right there, worked in, beat Monty Coleman for a nice little game. Let's watch Monty Coleman again. This is Barry Wilburn being held up on the line of scrimmage. Good bump and run technique. Stacy Bailey works underneath, but unfortunately, they're not going to him with the ball. <laughs> and they will stretch the chain. You know, last week against Tampa Bay, the Atlanta wide receivers, they're quick. They're splendid splinters, little slim guys. They had a hard time with physical bump and run technique on the line of scrimmage. They couldn't get away. We may see a lot of this from Washington. Rick Donnelly comes on as uh, Marion Campbell decides not to go for it, and Eric Yarber is back to return the punt for the Redskins. He waits at the 10-yard line. Rick Donnelly is a fine punter. Uh, he's averaging 45-5 right now. He's 44-1 in his career. Had one block last season. Gets the ball. Gets great hang time. Gets it way up there, Vern. See if he does that now. 7-0 Washington, 5.41 to go, first quarter. Not a good punt. No, nope, sure is. It's a return ball. Yarber at the 20. Ankle tackled and down at the 26-yard line. Tackle made by David Crudup. That's a six-yard return of a 33-yard punt. And Washington gets the ball back. Yesterday, Vince Workman of Ohio State had 162 yards in leading Ohio State to a 10-point win over Oregon. And last night, Harvey Williams of the Tigers of LSU had a big game, 196 yards in leading LSU to a trouncing of Rice. LSU and Ohio State meet next Saturday afternoon as CBS Sports presents college football, the fifth-ranked Buckeyes against the fourth-ranked Tigers of LSU. Flag is down, and so is Keith Griffin.
So we'll check the infraction. Joel Williams made the tackle, and here's Ben Dreith. Hello, Mr. Dreith. I love the way he does his public address announcements. Yes. Illegal motion. That's illegal motion, and that's going to be five yards. Must have been on the man in motion. Illegal motion on the offense. Two guys moving at the same time. They declined the penalty. It's second down. With authority. With authority. Don't want to be timid in that spot. I used to take that personal. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was talking directly to me. <laughs> second down and 12. Ball is at the 25. Redskins lead on a 17-yard touchdown toss from that man to Kelvin Bryant, Doug Williams. Four-man rush. Williams' little relief valve pass to Kelvin Bryant. He tries to work outside off the block of Russ Grimm. And he picks up about seven. Buddy Curry and Reggie Wilkes make the tackle. The nose guard war with the offensive center. Tony Casillas, number 75, in the middle of your screen, battling Russ Grimm, the veteran All-Pro. Two real fine football players fighting in the trenches. Get the screen going. He got him turned away from the screen, Russ did. Now he's going to work away and get in their ball. Casillas comes out on the prevent defense. The Redskins send, or the uh, Falcons, rather, send six defensive backs in, and Washington counters with three wide receivers as Ricky Sanders has joined the offensive lineup. Third and nine. Williams with time again. Flag is down. That may be why he had so much time. Pass is incomplete. If it's a holding call, I expect the Falcons to decline it and take the punt. I think they got a holding on Ed Simmons over there at right offensive tackle. Let's see what they call. Joe Williams is a little wobbly right here, number 54. Simmons is the guy who got his introduction into the league last week going up against... Number 76. That's it. They decline a penalty. It's fourth down. Simmons went head-to-head -head with Reggie White last week. Billy Johnson back could break the National Football League with record for all the number of punt returns. Billy Johnson is tied with Emlyn Tunnell right now at 258 career returns. This return, if he doesn't fair catch it, will break the record. And he said he'd like to send it about 87 yards into the end zone. Well, if he returns this one, it'll be about 80. Oh, oh great kick from Cox. But it will be returned by Billy White Shoes Johnson. That's not what he wanted. What a great punt. He backed him up. It was sometimes you kick him that far, you kick him too low. Here's a new record. Billy will get a hand. He'll keep the football as well. That was a 60-yard punt and only four on the return. And Billy White Shoes Johnson has one more career record. Fifth-ranked Ohio State and their Heisman hopeful Chris Spielman collide with fourth-ranked LSU. Two national powers next Saturday on CBS Sports. Back to action. They jumped the gun on us just a little bit. And Gerald Riggs is stopped for no gain by Dave Butts and Kurt Gavea, number 54, linebacker from Brigham Young. Did you notice... Did you notice last night that Coach Gibbs is really concerned about Riggs because he says Riggs has had very good games running against the Redskins, and he, he was extra worried. He's had an against the Redskins and a few other teams, <laughs> but he was hampered last week, only 52 yards. Now, they were playing catch-up in the second half, but got off to kind of a slow start. Here's Campbell. Goes deep left side. Double coverage. Kyle diving grab. Got it. Boy Dixon, second-year man. And again, they work on Daryl Green deep. Remember? Here you see the middle of your screen, Daryl Grant, Green, number 28. Floyd Dixon, 86, working on the outside. They get in a foot race. This shows the speed of Floyd Dixon because both people can fly. The ball thrown exactly where it had to be thrown. Daryl Green was in a full stride, could not jump to make the move to bat the ball away. Excellent throw by Scott. That's a 37-yard gain for Atlanta, their second of that length in the ball game. But they trail 7-0, 3.30 to go, first quarter. Wizenhunt in motion. Play fake again, Campbell. Looks deep right side, man is open. Overthrow. It's Dixon against Wilburn. 
had a half a stride on him, Dick. He had him again. Play action pass, freeze the free safety. Not so concerned about the linebackers. They just don't want the safety to get over there. They're in a foot race right now. And it was Daryl Green instead of Barry Wilburn yep. on this side. Yes, they're flopping him over to that side. They're moving him to the best receiver as they do against Mike Quick with it. Mm -hmm. Billy White Shoes Johnson comes in for Atlanta now on second down and 10. Ball is at the 48-yard line. Atlanta's trying to get them off that bump and run coverage. Quisenot follows the player, rather Riggs follows the block to Quisenot. Our score is 7-0. Walter Payton is making news. Let's go to Brent Musburger and find out why. The standard now, and the Bears lead the Buccaneers who have made three critical errors, 7-0. Back to Burn. All right, Brent, the records keep falling for Walter Payton. Billy White Shoes just set one here. Our score is 7 0, just under three minutes to go, first quarter. Third and five from the 43. Riggs lines up to the left of Scott Campbell. And Wizard again, the motion man, blitz, but the uh, delay call. Monty Coleman didn't hear the whistle or heard it and chose to ignore it, which I think is probably what happened. Before they snap the ball. Five yard penalty. Taking a little too much time to get the call in. Many times the quarterback gets blamed for that, but more often than not, I know in my case, when the quarterback was called for a delay of the game, it was my fault, not his most of the time. Just didn't get the signal in time or didn't make the decision quickly. Are you confessing that now or did you take the blame then? I never took the blame then. <laughs> <laughs> Jaworski, heavens to Betsy. Yeah. Third uh, down and ten. Let the Polish guy take the blame. That's right. <laughs> Seven nothing Washington. Blitz again. Intended for Aubrey Matthews with coverage from Daryl Green. Daryl Green's getting a workout here in the first quarter. They move Daryl Green all around, and I'm not so sure they don't move him according to tendencies by formation and then by athletic talent of the receiver. Now Rick Donnelly comes on as the Atlanta drive stalls. They have been across midfield three times now. On the opening drive, they had a pass intercepted by Barry Wilburn, and they've had to punt now twice. Eric Yarber is back to return it. This is not the only game they've had trouble putting uh, points on the board. They had trouble all through the preseason. Nice punt. Terrific punt, but it may go into the end zone. It does. It'll be a touchback. Redskins get the ball back one more time. They have the only touchdown of the game. All right, guys, it's a great spot now. I don't know Joe Gibbs, Dick, nearly as well as you do, but he seemed to me to be awfully tight yesterday. Very concerned. There are so many more concerns for the head coach in the National Football League today other than just coaching football. First down and 10. Play fake, and Williams looks deep again. Goes deep again. He has Gary Clark way down there and overthrows him. Oh boy, Clark had three steps on the defensive back. Scott Case. A little hook and go. Remember earlier we showed a play action pass with a curl pattern? Well, this time they ran the curl and go and had him beat. That's a very tough ball to throw because it breaks the rhythm of the quarterback throw and you have to allow the receiver, Vern, to come out of the break before you let it go mm -hmm. because there's no straight rhythm throw on that kind of pass. It's very tough to throw that accurately. Doug Williams now three out of six for 25 yards, 17 of which was a touchdown toss to Kelvin Bryant. Last year, through one pass, he was one for three, or rather, 0 for one, through that pass against the Redskins, or the Cowboys. I wish I hadn't started that call. <laughs> it's second and ten. Williams is sacked. Fumble. That's a free ball. They are still fighting for it. Atlanta signals that they have it, but the officials haven't done so yet. I think that was Rick Bryan, number 77, that came on a hard outside rush around Joe Jacoby, number 66. Quite a wrestling match. Officials still have now. He's getting ready. Ben Dry says, give me the ball back. Tony Casillas says, I haven't had many of these. I want to keep it. Bryant right here. 
coming from the blind side of the quarterback. He can't see him. He's holding the ball. Nice reverse spin move to the inside. Here he comes. Wham! Knocks the ball loose. Great play. Joe Jacoby getting beat to the inside. Fumble turnover. First down to Atlanta Falcons. Last year, the Redskins did not lose a fumble in their last nine games. They had a fumble last week, and now the first turnover for Washington. And only lost one fumble in 12 games. Atlanta gets it in great shape at the 22-yard line. But they have had offensive woes all through preseason and last week. Campbell did throw a touchdown pass last week. He'll have to run this one. And is pushed out of bounds inside the 20 at the 19. Good coverage downfield. He just couldn't find a receiver open. And Campbell's not a running tag quarterback, but he was out there with the protection of the guard, John Scully, number 61. He just couldn't find anyone to throw to. Good defense. Talked about these Atlanta problems. Look at their uh, scoring drop, Dick. This is the reason they change quarterbacks. They just feel they have to give somebody else the opportunity to, to see if they can get more offensive production. Campbell joined this team as a free agent in November last year, and ironically enough, he was attracted to the Atlanta circumstance because Dan Henning was the coach. Dan Henning showed some real sincere interest in him. We'll be calling from time to time, and uh, that really impressed him. Of course, he comes here, and Dan's not here. Henning is now upstairs in Atlanta. His first trip back, though, he's a coach with the Redskins. He beat Darrell Green. Darrell Green slipped. Straight drop back pass. He gets good protection. No heat inside. Nobody in his face. Here he goes. Little token fade. Straight drop back. There he is. Now he lays it out there. Dixon took a good, strong inside post move, then came out of the post move and went to the corner, beat Daryl Green, touchdown. Daryl Green gave that one up last week to, uh, who was it, uh, Mike Quick? Mike Quick it was, yeah. Boy Dixon gets the touchdown, his first of the year, and Scott Campbell has thrown his second of the season. Look at his reaction. Do you think this won't help his confidence? His dad is home in Hershey, Pennsylvania, watching this via satellite. His name is Ken Campbell. Actually, he played for the New York Titans years ago. Ken Campbell did. He's the athletic director of high school in Hershey, Pennsylvania. You look at Scott Campbell's case and think about how the fortunes of a man's life can change. Oh. He signed on as a free agent, Dick, here. He was really the number four quarterback, he thought, after they drafted Chris Miller, who hasn't signed yet. But they've got Archer in camp. They had Turk Schoenert in camp. Chris Miller was here for minicamp. And Scott told us yesterday, I just really have taken a very relaxed attitude toward my whole circumstance in the NFL. And he finds himself in an offense that he feels better in. He said, it's not quite as disciplined pocket-wise. I can move out of the pocket on rollouts and play actions. Where in Pittsburgh, when I was there, there was a very disciplined pocket-passing type offense, and he didn't feel as comfortable. He's doing a good job today. He's a newlywed. Married Kim in June and bumped into you in Bermuda, I understand. Yeah. I was over there working for automobile dealership. You're working in Bermuda? Oh, yeah. Tough. Someone has to do it. They got any more of those jobs? <laughs> Luckhurst will kick off. Timmy Smith and Keith Griffin of the deep man. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Just under 90 seconds to go. First quarter. Oh! A mental error by Keith Griffin. And Steve Hamilton picks it up for the Redskins and is down to the nine-yard line. Woo! That could have been a disaster. I've seen that happen maybe once or twice in the NFL. <laughs> to the left corner of the end zone, on your screen right here. Look, he's trying to stay in bounds. He throws it back. I don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> that ball's a live ball. Fortunately, he had a teammate right there to help him. Number 64, Steve Hamilton, becomes a ball carrier. Holy mech, you know, one time in a playoff game, I had my kickoff returner fumble in the end zone. The other team got it. Touchdown, New York Giants. Mick Luckhurst liked it. You bet he did. Joe Gibbs won't. I'll bet Keith Griffin doesn't stray within 40 feet of it. He better make a 90-yard run. That's not it. That's Kelvin Bryant, and he's out across the 10 near the 13-yard line. Kelvin Bryant, of course, comes out of the USFL with great stats. I mean, he just did a super job with 4,055 yards, but he hasn't stayed healthy long enough, Burn, to be very productive for the Redskins. 
That was Keith Griffin. I'll beg your pardon. Was it Keith Yeah. Excuse me. Beg your pardon. That's all right. You're allowed to make a mistake. <laughs> Preseason. <laughs> Couple of mine on the strike. Second down. Six. Ball to 14. Here's Griffin again. Knocked down near the 19-yard line. Robert Moore, number 34, is up there. And John Rady, number 59. Washington Redskins offensive line is coming off the ball nicely, sort of controlling the line of scrimmage. I'm sort of surprised because the down three of Atlanta Falcons, they're all big, strong guys, and Michael Gann, Tony Casillas, and Rick Bryan, you know, they're all over 270 and, and all first-round picks. You wouldn't think you could block them quite that easily. We're at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, the final 14 seconds of the first quarter, and timeout has been called now for the measurement. A sellout crowd. It's been sold out for more than a month. And uh, in all candor, I think the attraction here, the Redskins, more than the Falcons, there are numerous Redskin fans who can't get tickets to RFK Stadium who come down here when the uh, Washington team plays here. It's not 50-50 split. No, I know, but I saw a lot of Redskin hats around here mm -hmm. with the Indian on it. It was a first down for Washington, but that'll be the final play of the first quarter. Been a good ball game so far. Doug Williams has thrown for one touchdown. So has Scott Campbell, and we're tied 7-7 with three quarters to go. Sunny September afternoon, and we're tied at 7-7. Vern Lundquist and Dick Vermeil, the Redskins and the Atlanta Falcons. Washington with 69 total yards in the first quarter. Atlanta with 152. Doug Williams is three out of six. Hands it off right side, Kelvin Bryant. Third play by Reggie Wilkes. Good linebacker play. That's the way that position's got to be played. Take a look at Reggie Wilkes play the linebacker position to the left side of the corner of your screen in front of number 34, Robert Moore. See him working on that? Plays a good leverage on the play, inside out, makes a tackle, minus yardage. That's the way the linebacker's got to play that play. Reggie Wilkes, part of the Philadelphia connection in Atlanta. Marion Campbell has acquired any number of his former players and Dick's former players with the Eagles, who are playing here now. Second down and 13. Three wide receiver set as Ricky Sanders has come in. Here's a quiet art monk coming to the right side. They hand it off left. And Kelvin Bryant weaves his way across the 20 and is spilled at the 23-yard line by Joel Williams, number 54. Flag is also down. When Kelvin was at the Stars, I saw him run some great plays. I mean, break some long runs and all that. Of course, this is a different level, but he still has that innate running ability. I'll never forget him because here's the penalty. When he was a junior at North Carolina, they played out at Texas Tech, and I did the ball game. Holding, 66, 10-yard penalty, second down. Joe Jacoby. And I was working the ball game. Kelvin Bryant scored the only touchdown of the game in a 7-3 game. Dick, we had a 56-minute fill after the ball game. <laughs> 56 minutes. And we showed that one touchdown at least 27 times. <laughs> you had to lay some words on him, didn't you? So I will never forget Kelvin Bryant. We had the band leaving, had the bus heading out of town. Second down and 22 now. R.C. Thielman, who was traded by Dan Henning to Washington in a contract dispute, comes out at right guard. inside Kelvin Bryant across the 10 to the 12 yard line talked about Joel Williams and Reggie Wilkes former Philadelphia players now playing for their head coach Marion Campbell look at the lineup Greg Brown also played there Leonard Mitchell who's the most recent acquisition and Dennis Harrison well if you've coached somebody you shouldn't make a mistake when you compare their past performance in coaching guys like this to the roster that you now have. And if somebody can help you, you shouldn't stop as a head coach of bringing those guys in regardless of where you coached them before. you got to get help. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Marion Campbell in his first year here replacing Dan Henry. 30 17. They try to draw. Kelvin Bryant works loose. Still fighting for yardage. That's short of the first down. And that's got to bring some satisfaction to the Atlanta defensive unit. The Redskins love to run this little counter gap play. Get the ball, a little delayed action, counter step, get the two linemen pulling around in front. Here comes big Joe Jacoby, 66, taking on Robert Moore, 34. That's an elephant on a mouse right there. <laughs> Holy mackerel. And then you see the nice running skills demonstrated by Kelvin Brand. Last week in the loss to Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers were 
14 of 16 on third down conversions. Washington so far is uh, three out of four now. Here's the pressure coming, and Steve Cox gets it away. Another fine punt. Billy Johnson backs up to the 21. Got a lane in the Knocked down at the 32-yard line. A 44-yard punt. And 12 on the return. The tackle made by Copeland. Aaron Copeland, we're tied at seven. Fourteen to go in the half. Ball game tied seven to seven here in Atlanta. So far, Doug Williams has thrown a touchdown, and so has Scott Campbell. Both resulted from turnovers. It was an interception that set up the Washington drive, and a fumble recovery from Doug Williams that uh, set up the Atlanta counter score. Quiznot starts in motion on first down and ten. They try the draw play. Riggs breaks loose. Nice little maneuver to the left. Nice little maneuver to the right. And Barry Wilburn holds him down at the twenty-one. Just a draw play. Quarterback takes him the ball deep. They get the defensive tackles. In this case, turned out. See, they turn him out right now. He breaks up inside. Dean Hamill tried to make the play. Now watch the little stutter step he uses right here. Breaks away to the right. Barry Wolven, 45, catching him. And Riggs is not known for the guy that makes the long run. His longest run in his career is 57 yards. I don't know how many yards he got on that one, but he it was a nice run. 44. First down and 10 after the 44-yard gain. Atlanta and Washington are tied 7-7. Inside handoff. It's Riggs again. You know what you're saying right now is Neil Okerwitz, where are you? Rich Malott, where are you? They're running inside, my middle linebacker. Here they've got their young Kurt Gavaya trying to handle that responsibility. And in that kind of defense, if that guy's not making those plays, you're in trouble. Dean Hamill is also in the lineup now, replacing Daryl Grant. That's Hamill, number 78. Gavea, number 54. Got the start, again, because of bursitis in Rich Malott's right elbow, which flared up last night. And Olkowitz, as we said, is on injured reserve. Second down and seven. And Campbell to throw. Five-step drop, comes left. Nice catch. Ken Wisenhunt in front of Alvin Walton. Coming in motion, Ken Wissenhut in the middle of your screen right here. Coming across, stretches the defense now. Straight drop back pass, good protection again. Turns to his left, fires it. Right where it had to be, low into the outside. Nice job. That's a game of seven. Wissenhut's second catch of the day. Scott Campbell is 7 of 14 for 131 yards. He's hit two of 37 yards each. Third down three. Try Riggs. And he has to struggle to get close to the chain. Charles Mann, number 71, made the stop. See if he got enough for the first down. I, I don't think he made it. You know, this might be a good time for Marion Campbell to go for it. it. Really might be a good time. They've got momentum. They've got the good run. They've got the crowd behind him. You go for a field goal here. You, I think you go for it. I think you know him well. Suck it up, boy, and go for it. Now, having made the decision to go for it, who do you use? Daryl Riggs? <laughs> you might as well give it to the Mack truck. Let him go. That's Jim Hannafin, the former Cardinal coach, who's now the offensive line coach at Atlanta. And the Falcons do have a two-back set now. Kenny Flowers, the rookie out of Clemson, has come in. They are in the eye. It's Riggs. See if he got it. It's a left foot plant. So much of football today is mental. Teams are so equal. Motivation, mental side of the game, either in preparation or game day, can make the difference. This could be a big lift for the Falcon offense. Van Dreyf is calling the chain out. Charles Mann and Gavea made the tackle on Riggs. It can go the other way, too, if you don't make it. Mm -hmm. I've been in that situation. I don't know if they made it. Well, if Mike Ken will cooperate, we'll be able to see. I don't know. Didn't get it. Did not get it. Let's take a close look. I formation, 42, Daryl Riggs. Lead blocking, Flowers, 48, gets in there. Nice fill by Cabea right there. Cabea, 54. 
Good tackle, didn't make it. Good defense by the Redskins. Give them credit when credit's due. Marion Campbell did not hesitate, but Gerald Riggs did not pick up the first down, and the Redskins take over on downs just under nine minutes to go in the half. Keith Griffin slips the tackle at the line of scrimmage, gets out near the 15. Let's go back to that fourth down play, Dick. Uh, you still agree with the decision? Oh, I think it was a good decision. Good decision. The play isn't as important as who you give the ball to, and the linebacker in this case, Gavea, attacked the line of scrimmage. He didn't move parallel. He went up in the hole and met the running back at the point of attack. See him coming from the left side of your screen? Boom! He's on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Even with the power of Riggs, he couldn't get the first down. But if you're ever in doubt as a coach, don't worry about the play you call. Just give it to the right player. <laughs> and in this case, Gouveia had the answer for Washington. It's second down and seven. We're tied at seven. Doug Williams, a moderate game so far. Three of six for 25 yards, and he's also fumbled once. Pops it out across the middle to his tight end, Glenn Dennison, the H-back, actually. Young man who's filling the roster spot normally occupied by Glenn Didier. 10-10, New Orleans and Philadelphia in the second quarter, and Cleveland leads Pittsburgh by three. When you take a Clint Didier out of that position, you really cut the effectiveness, I think, of the, the one-back running attack, because the, Didier's the kind of guy, in fact, in his career, he has a ratio of one touchdown catch for every sixth reception. Tremendous production. Then you take a free agent and put him in that spot, you aren't gonna get the same production. Third and two Redskins. Three wide receivers as Ricky Sanders has joined the outfit. Williams looks right, pops it across the middle, caught by Sanders, first down for 34. Robert Moore makes the tackle. Good protection again, straight drop back pass. Notice no shotgun. Atlanta using the shotgun on third down. The Redskins, basic drop back passing formation. Good shake and break move right here. Beats the one-on-one -on -one tight man coverage. First down. That was Ricky Sanders and not Cliff Benson. And Washington has now passed for only 44 yards. As Sanders stands by Jay Schrader on the Washington bench. Oh. Whoops. Flags are down. This will be against the Redskins. Incomplete across the middle. Intended uh, for Keith Griffin and Buddy Curry doing the defensive job. They'll refuse the penalty, I think, here. I think it was Glenn Dennison, wasn't it? The uh, mm -hmm. back they refuse it. Put him second and ten. Illegal motion. Offense number 89. They declined a penalty. It's second down. Many times what happens to an offensive player in that situation is defensive audibles make him jump off. All of a sudden his hearing concentration, whatever it may be, moves to the defense. They shout something and he jumps. Gets it confused with the offensive cadence. Overreact to the instinct. Huh? Right. Second down and 10. 7-7 seven, seven game, 6.42 to go, first half. That's Don Warren in motion. Doug Williams on a half roll. Looks back, there's nothing there, and he throws it away. No in the grass, just an incomplete pass. Our score is 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's check in with Brent Musburger and find out what's happening with Chicago and Tampa Bay. Well, Vern, let's take a look at that Bears' second touchdown. Here is next year's running back who will replace Walter Payton, Neil Anderson. And he sprints 27 yards, and the Bears now lead the Buccaneers 14-3. Let's go back to Vern. Boy, didn't Neil Anderson look good on Monday night? Yeah. I know that the Chicago coaching staff really thinks a little. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to play much when you have a Walter Payton. That's your right. your turn. Our score is 7-7. Dick said at the outset this could be a Joe Gibbs nightmare. You try to convince your team you've got a worthy opponent after they've been trashed by 38 points. And Atlanta has played well. Williams, deep across the middle, almost picked off, intended for Gary Clark. And David Crudup almost had it. Gary Clark made a super effort to get the ball. Top of your screen is going to work on a square in pattern. He gets a little stick move, gets separation. Crude up moving from the right side of your screen, comes in and breaks it up. If it had been thrown out in front of him and he had allowed to keep coming across the field, big play. Now Steve Cox is on the punt, and Billy Johnson waits for it inside the 15. Cox 
Hurts has kicks of 60 and 44 yards. The lousy part. Yep. Johnson didn't get much of a head start on that ball. No. Hard to return it, but not a good punt. Atlanta already has 205 yards of total offense, but they only have seven points. Twenty-one to go, first half, 7-7 game. Scott Campbell and the Falcons back at the line of scrimmage, which is their own 24. And Campbell makes the dog play, has to scramble, then lobs it out to a relief foul. Grisenot, his third catch of the first half, and he picks up five and a half yards. Scott did a nice job of sliding away from David uh, Butts' inside pressure. He just slid to the left and dropped it down. Good job. He's showing good poise. And you, uh, are you surprised at how well he's played so far? I actually am. Mm -hmm. I really am. I have never been a big believer in changing quarterbacks. You know, that's just a, a different philosophy, and I, I've seen it be a negative more than I ever have a positive. But in this case so far, you'd have to say he's doing a good job. He's thrown two passes for 37 yards apiece, and then Riggs had a 44-yard run to account for a huge chunk of those 210 yards. Second and five, Campbell scrambles. Likes to throw on the run. And that pass is incomplete. 49ers in Cincinnati in a slugfest at Riverfront. Let's go to Brent Musburger and find out what's happening. Well, Vern, the 49ers had been under fire. Joe Montana sacked 10-7. Bengals over the Niners. Back to Vern. 10-7 there. 7-7 here. 5-28 to go in the half. And a third down and five. Atlanta only one of five on third down conversions. Steve Griffin and Sylvester Stamps come in. Campbell's punch goes out of the shotgun. Redskins have nine men on the line. They're bringing several. Manley comes. Passes. Incomplete left side. It'll be fourth down. Dexter Manley had pretty good pressure out there. Now, he didn't get to the quarterback, but he forced the quarterback to throw it a little bit higher angle than he wanted to throw. He couldn't just fire that one flat. Rick Donnelly is on the punt for the third time. First uh, punt was 33, last was 48, and Eric Yarber is deep to return it. Oh, that is a superb oh, hit. Inside the 10 at the 9. Yarber nailed at the 17. There's a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. Oh, man. If I were the punter and one of my linemen went down too soon on that, I think I'd walk up and kick him right in the you-know-what, right in the fanny. Let's watch and see if it happens. How many yards did he punt that football? 60. But Four, it's six, be... hang time. An eligible man down the field oh. on the kicking team, 59. They're going to take the penalty, five-yard penalty. That was a great punt. John Rady is the man who broke too early. What's the technique there, Dick? How do you how do you coach them? Just listen to the sound? Yeah, they're listening, but also there's a rhythm. A punt normally takes 2.2 or 2.4 seconds to get off from the snap to the catch of the ball to the punt and you sort of get a rhythm and you also listen and uh, they just got a little anxious right there the punter can screw you up if he hangs on the ball too soon or too long you know this guy has a 71 yard punt to his career but i'll tell you that was a boomer well he'll have to do it again and yarber moves up inside the 25 not as good but not bad no. yarber at the 14 yard line that may be close to 60 yards and Yarber's down this time at the 22. Good special teams play by Atlanta Falcons. That's a 62-yard punt. <laughs> it didn't spiral as pretty. <laughs> this is the first of our doubleheader on CBS this afternoon. Most of you will see the Cowboys and Giants in our second game. Others will see the Rams, the Raiders, or San Diego. Dallas? Hey, don't ever sell the Dallas Cowboys short. They're already writing them off. They've lost so many in a row. I have heard that since started coaching against them in 1969, mm -hmm. and they jump up and grab you. Watch out. You think they will today? They could very well do it. Do you really believe that? I do think they can. I never I never go against the Cowboys. Because I had a coach against them so much, and you respect what they've been able to do over the years. First and 10, Washington. A quick pass out to Gary Clark, who spins out of a tackle. Here he goes down the sideline. Across the 50 and tackled the 48. Wendell Kaysen and John Rady caught up with him. Here you go, just a little quick hitch pattern. Right here, he's going to come down, quick hitch. Butler attacks, misses the tackle. You've got to make that tackle. You can't be too aggressive in attacking this one. See this? No help underneath. 
quick hitch. Now he turns, shakes, and breaks. And now that's the advantage of a hitch pattern over a square out. Mm -hmm. Because you can turn and run where this little quick out pattern, you're already out of bounds. Well executed play. Gain of 29 for Gary Clark. Had a big day last week against the Eagles. Now Warren starts left and comes back right. They hand it off in the middle to Kelvin Bryant. And he's going to be tackled near the 43-yard line. George Rogers on the injured reserve back home, Washington, and watching today. Did you notice how the man in motion, the H-back in this case, took off in one direction, then came around? He starts in one direction and then comes back. The reason they do that is to stop a defense from overshifting with the man in motion. They start in one direction and come back. You slide, you end up going the wrong way. Second and four. 345 to go first half, 7-7 seven, seven ball game. And off again to Bryant surges forward for a first down at the 37 yard line. Doug Williams first start in five years came off the bench when Schrader was injured on the ninth play of last week's game threw for two touchdowns. He has one this afternoon that to Kelvin Bryant. You know what was impressive last night is when I asked him I says do if you think if you play well enough you'll be the starter he says the job belongs to Jay. He was the starter. When he's healthy, he'll be the starter. That's how I would want it to be if I had been the starter. Mm -hmm. A lot of class. First and ten, Washington. Williams tipped, intercepted. Bobby Butler comes back and looks for blocks and gets a couple. He is down at the 27. His first of the year. Just a seam pass. It'll probably take place right about the middle of your screen. Glenn Dennison, he fires it right where it has to be. He bobbles it, pushes it in the air. Butler picks it off. See what I mean when you take a Clint Didier out of there and mm -hmm. put somebody else? It gets you beat. That's Butler's 20th career pass interception. Bobby was on the uh, injured reserve list most of the latter part of last season with a broken leg. Turnovers now two for the Redskins. Williams has fumbled once and been intercepted once. Up the middle they go to Gerald Riggs. Scott, is he a horse? Woo! <laughs> Love him. You like that? Oh, I like to see a guy like he's a he's a throwback to the old guys, you know. Take a look at the Washington turnover ratio since 1982. I tell you, you turn the ball over, you lose. You turn the ball over, you win. And you don't turn the ball over, you win. It's really true in the Redskins case. And uh, it's remarkable that 85, they were as good as they were, having been minus six. Yeah. Well, how about that record in 83? Four yeah. plus 43. I remember that. Here's Campbell on the roll. Incomplete. Should have been completed. Intended for Wisenhunt. You know, people don't realize when you're coaching to make it more meaningful to your players, you turn turnovers into points so they have a better understanding of how important. You know, you hear that, well, it's a fumble that kills you, mm -hmm. interception that kills you. We, through a computer, we turn it into points. We would say a fumble costs you three and a half points, an interception would cost you four and a half. Points. What's the most expensive turnover? Interception, for run back for a touchdown, usually computes to where you worth about 11 points. Mm. It makes it more meaningful for your players. Third down and one. Riggs searching, and I don't know whether he found it. I don't know. He might have started searching just a little too yeah. soon. You start running inside against David Butts, Daryl Grant, Dean Hamill, those kind of guys, you better get your pads down. <laughs> Butts can trip you. Oh, man. Over the years of coaching against David Butts, I think he was really a pain because it takes a special kind of guard. <laughs> it takes a special kind of offensive guard to play on him. Now, Freylake is the kind of guard you'd like to play on, a 280 pounder. I never had that kind of guy. Woody Peoples used to play him pretty good. But now, in the sanctity in of that. your locker room, did you refer to him as a pain? Oh, no, I was or a little strong. I have a lot of respect for that guy. Riggs got the first down. Well, Butts is a consummate professional. I used to have coaches tell me, oh, he takes a playoff. He doesn't get you 100% every down. I said, yeah, when he plays against you, maybe, but not against us. <laughs> Charles Mann was really fascinating last night talking to us about what playing next to Dave Butts had meant to him. I know what he says. You know, when I get tired, I lean over the other way. Five 
five-year pro Charles Mann standing next to 14-year-old pro Dave Butts. He said, when I get tired, I look at Butts. He's the oldest player in the NFL, and he's still going. I'm embarrassed if I even mention being tired. First and ten, however, for the Falcons. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Two minutes to go, first half. Campbell, good punt. A lot of time. Wasn't the prettiest pass in the world, but Wisnant gets it, and he's down at the 40. Good pass protection. Good pass protection. Watch David Butts in the middle of your screen, number 65. Good, strong power inside rusher. Man, number 71 on the left side of your screen. Freilich, number 79, doing a good job of turning him outside so the quarterback can now slide up inside the pocket. Good time. See him sliding to the right. Here's Campbell, deep left side. Billy Johnson over and thrown by two feet. They're giving Daryl Green a chase today. They are going after Daryl. Philadelphia did it last week. Now these guys going after. Maybe there's a reason he didn't run in the fastest man contest this year. I'm not, you know, if you've got a Wilburn, I'm not trying to discredit his contribution to the defensive unit, but if you've got Wilburn versus Green, strikes me you'd go Wilburn. You would think so. Did you do that as a coach, though? Oh. Would you target a guy? Oh, you bet. Yeah, if you're going to throw one, it's not a high percentage throw anyway. You might as well try to get the percentages in your favor just a little bit more. And there were certain guys that had coverage problems deep. Third and six, 7-7 seven, seven game, 122 to go before halftime. Campbell back in trouble. Charles Mann can't get him, though, and Campbell gets rid of it incomplete. Good avoid, good pressure by Charles Mann. Charles Mann is working on Leonard Mitchell, who's up around 300 pounds. Leonard <laughs> Mitchell just acquired from the Philadelphia Eagles. In the middle of your screen, bump and run, Barry Wilburn, number 45. On Dixon, number 86, pretty good. Now he's playing a chase technique because he has a safety deep that's going to help him there. Now they're just going to play cat and mouse. Look at him. See the quarterback scrambling around. Here's Donnelly's punt. Good one. Yarber has trouble with the sun, then steps out of a tackle and is knocked off his feet near the 23-yard line. Michael Reed again led the charge downfield, a 47-yard punt, 11 on the return. And Joe Gibbs will send Doug Williams back onto the field. Coming up at halftime, Brandon Irv, our New York studios with scores and highlights, and a report of two teams at the crossroads, the Giants and the Cowboys, and the different directions they've taken since their last meeting in November of 86. That's coming up at halftime. Tell you, showed that little shot there right before they went to that graphic of the Redskin coaching staff. Mm -hmm. There aren't many any better. In fact, there may not be any better coaching staff than that group. Heck of a coaching staff. First down and 10. Bryant is in the backfield along with Doug Williams. And Williams settles into the right flat for Kelvin Bryant. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock at the 40-yard line. One minute exactly to go. Boy, he's a good receiver. You know, this is the time that you're pleased to have a quarterback that's been in the heat of the battle many times, you know, and minute starter and all that kind of stuff, because you get in a two-minute drill. Mm -hmm. It's not a waste of time. He's liable to get it down there for the field goal or the touchdown. He can do it. Got one minute right now, 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Doug Williams has been the object of a lot of press fascination this week. We were teasing him last night. He got almost as much ink as Joe Biden and Robert Bork. Yeah. Plus, it gets credit for a win. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> And that's a first down at the 42, and the Redskins call timeout. You know what people used to say to me all the time in coaching is, why don't you run that two-minute offense all the time? You always move the ball so well, not thinking the defense is a lot different. That's right. Time has been called. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Joe Gibbs' team took a 7-0 lead on a Williams pass to Kelvin Bryant. Atlanta came back to tie it up. No scoring in this quarter, and we've got 53 seconds to go. Pass is complete in front of Bobby Butler. Ricky Sanders makes the grab, and then Butler makes the tackle. No huddle offense for the Redskins. First and 10 with 35 seconds to go. Did you see Williams just snap that off, actually almost falling back under pressure? Great on. Good pass pocket. Left side, caught by Gary Clark, out of bounds with the first down. That stops the clock at the 36-yard line, and a flag comes flying. That's a stupid flag. 
Who's that on, Vern? I can't tell yet. Is that? I don't know. Wendell Kaysen over there, number 20? Kaysen is one of them, yeah. Kelvin Bryant gives him a little if you, fraternal tap. If you get a... Now, let's see. Ben Dreyfus will let us know. That's stupid. pass protection. He's getting time to do what he wants to do. He looks right, doesn't like what he sees, comes back to the left, fires it. Good, strong, accurate throw. Here comes Crudup, number 20, and Wendell Kaysen, number 20, weather coming up there. Let's see what's happening there. I don't really see too much, did you? Yeah, I did. Through the forearm. Through the forearm. Through the forearm. Absolutely. Dumb play. First and ten Redskins, a chance to break the tie just before halftime. Williams has to scramble. Fires it low into the outside. Got the clock stop too, I think. No, nope, it's all incomplete. incomplete, Vern. In regard to that kind of penalty, Vern, you got ten guys playing super defense, and one guy turns around because of a lack of discipline, gives him 15 yards. That drives you nuts. Oh. Well, we've got our first replay case right now. They're looking at that last play up in the uh, replay booth. The replay official is Tony Viteri. Communicator Jim Heffern from the league office. There's Wendell Kaysen. Let's see if we can take a look at this and find out for ourselves. Look at he's got glasses on up there. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> he's in trouble. Let's take a look. Follow the ball. It's going to end up to the right side of your screen as you viewers watch this. He moves out nicely. Tough man to sack. Joe Williams gets pressure, number 54. Can't see from this side. The official right there said reception. An official coming from the inside thought he might have trapped it. Do Take one another? more look at it. Yeah, it's a good angle. Out of way, guys. It's a oh. drop. It's an incomplete pass. He dropped it. He dropped it. Incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. That's why I like the instant replay. Do you now? Oh, I love it. Good job up there, guys. Tony Viteri is the replay official somewhere behind that glass. You know, some of them are going to go for you, and some of them are going to go against you. But it does eliminate the mistake from time to I'm time. I'm glad to hear you say that you like it. I've always said I like it. I just had not with you before. Yes, right. Second down and ten. Williams, a short. Oh, 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 if Butler hangs on, it's 85 yards. There wasn't a soul in the park that could have caught him. Bobby Butler has one today, should have had two. Should, and that would have been in the end zone with his kind of speed. Drop back pass, fires it out, coming right down the pipe, coming right at you, sitting on the couch. Drops that thing. Now, you should have seen the reaction of Doug Williams. He stood in position after the throw and started signaling that the receiver didn't come back hard enough. He was really upset. Ali Hajashik will try the field goal that will break the tie. 38-yard kick. Low snap. Eric Yarber with a hold. That's what Jay Schrader has been doing. And now a flag for running into the punter. For the kicker, rather. First down. Gibbs lost Jess Atkinson last week when Andre Waters hit him. Into the kicker on a defense. Five-yard penalty. And the first down. Let's take a look at it. You can run into him if you're blocked into him, but you cannot run into him deliberately. Coming from the right side of your straight, left side, right there. Oh, yes. <laughs> Obvious right there. Sylvester Stamps. Number 29 makes a mistake. God, these kind of things get you beat. So Haja Sheik will try it again with only two seconds left in the half. Coach Gibbs has got to think he's snake bit seeing that happen two weeks in a row. Atkinson is out on the injured reserve watching back in Washington. And Eric Yarber has replaced Jay Schrader as the holder. That wasn't Jay's fault. That was a low snap last time. This time it's to the left. A flop. Another flag. 
It was the ball was hit. Joe's telling him, that's it, Joe. Football. Tim Green, number 99, gets the ball. Just a piece of it. You can rough anybody if you tip it. He got a tip, therefore anything goes. And as a result, we're at halftime. The end of the first half with our score, Washington 7, Atlanta 7. sellout crowd in Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium has enjoyed this thus far as the Falcons have tied the Washington Redskins at halftime 7-7. It was Washington which scored first on a Doug uh, Williams pass, but then Atlanta came back. Uh, Dick Vermeil, you said at the outset of the day that you thought this would be a much closer game than most folks thought. Well, Joe Gibbs told us last night, we will be playing the Atlanta Fountain football team that I know is a good football team, not the one we prepared for on, from a tape evaluation process all week, and I'm concerned about it. Well, so far, Marion Campbell looks like a bit of a genius in making this quarterback change. Scott Campbell has played very well. He's done a good job, and at least right now he hasn't gotten him beat. He's kept him in the football game. The defense has played well. The same thing with Doug Williams. He hasn't gotten him beat. As an example of the aggressiveness of the Falcons, I guess you could say that. They have been penalized seven times for 55 yards. Washington only won. But look, Atlanta had 205 yards of total offense in a game last week, 230 at the half. It really surprises me that they've been able to move the ball quite that well. I, I look for the Redskin defense to tighten up the second half. The one Atlanta touchdown came when Scott Campbell went in the left corner of the end zone and he found Floyd Dixon who had uh, gotten by Daryl Green when he slipped down. Daryl Green went all the way to the post with a nice move over here to the right corner of your screen. You won't be able to see it until the end of it. He's coming out of a post pattern back to the corner and Daryl Green had taken the bite all the way inside. That tied it up in the latter part of the first quarter. We had no scoring in quarter number two. We're ready for quarter number three as CBS Sports coverage of the NFL We'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. More than 50,000 gathered here for the Atlanta Falcons home opener as the Falcons take on Doug Williams and the Washington Redskins. Tied 7-7 as we get set for quarter number three. Doug Williams in the first half in his first start in five years in the NFL. Nine of 18 for 102 yards. If you watched Irv Cross's report on Doug on the NFL today, you know that Doug lost his first wife to brain cancer uh, some years back. Well, Doug has remarried. He and his wife had a five-year-old daughter, Ashley, and that is little Ashley on the right-hand side. She's got that gray lid on there. Yep. And uh, Doug's new wife, Lisa, on the left. When Dick and I talked with Doug last night, he was holding Ashley in his uh, in his lap most of the time. I she think was she's... giving us a game plan, wasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go go deep and get me a sucker. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's little Lisa who at the, or rather little Ashley who at the moment is not terribly interested in what her dad is doing here. No, but she will become interested because they'll be coming out from that end zone with the football here in a minute. Doug also said on uh, his conversation with Irv after what happened to him and his uh, and the personal tragedies he's had to endure, nothing that happens in a football field will really affect his confidence in himself. You talk about becoming mentally tough the hard way. He has become mentally tough through some real adverse situations. But, you know, you made a good point, too, about the, the coaching and the ownership of the Washington Redskins. Now, here's a man as a backup quarterback in his early 30s who's being paid a hefty salary, somewhere around $500,000 a year. Not every organization would do that, would they, Dick? No, I think John, uh, Jack Kent Cook is in the football business to win games, not to make money. He doesn't, call, he doesn't care what it costs to win football games. Just win. That's yeah. all. <laughs> it's, a, it's a kind of situation as a coach you want to work for and work in. Falcons will kick off as we get set for the third quarter. Nick Pluckers will do that. Deep men are Keith Griffin and Timmy Smith. And it's a touchback. Pluckers puts it three yards into the end zone. Redskins will start from their own 20, and they have not begun a drive from beyond the 28-yard line so far in this game. That's a long football field, a long football field, and I wouldn't uh, be a bit surprised if, to see the Redskins try to go deep just a little bit more with the football. Last week, Dick, they had six plays of 25 yards or more. No, they are a big play football team. Their offense yard for pass attempt and completion last year was the best in football. 
Kelvin Bryant opens at the running back spot. Keith Griffin on the bench. First and ten, Washington from the point. Play fake, and Williams goes deep. Oh, settles short. Incomplete. Reggie Wilkes couldn't hang on to it. You'll note there was a play action fake in the backfield, a little play action back here, crossing action to freeze these backers, but Wilk still got out underneath it. Did a nice job. Now watch the fake. See, that normally freezes backers. It froze the inside backers a little bit more. Now the receiver driving for the deep turn in. He turns in. Reggie coming from the left side, turns, wheels, sees the ball, drops the interception. Whew. That's two for the Falcons now in the last three minutes of actual play as Bobby Butler dropped a touchdown interception in the latter stages of the first half. Bryant comes to the right side on second and ten. Art Monk in motion. Williams finds Art Monk. A gain of six out of the 26. David Crudup, number 30, made the tackle. And that's Monk's first catch today, and that gives him a streak of 61 consecutive games in which he's caught a pass. Well, he's led the National Football League in the reception over the last four years with 273. That's his 274th. If the Redskins are going to beat somebody, they've got to get the ball in this guy's hands, and I think that's what they'll do. Even though, you know, the Atlanta plays a lot of zones, so they'll work him in front of him in the short stuff and then get him deep down the seams. We haven't mentioned his name, and we haven't mentioned Gary Clark much today. No, we haven't. Four wide receivers now for the Falcons on third and four. Three line up to the left side. Williams goes over there. Good oh, good on the field tackle. Good tackle on Bryant. David Crudup on Kelvin Bryant. He came up and he smacked him. Bryant didn't get a chance to regroup after he caught the ball, direct his attention on the tackler and make him miss. Good job by Crudup. Kelvin Bryant to the right corner of your screen, just coming out, a little first down type throw. He gets it to him quickly. Good defense. Good defense. He huh? took it away from him. And that brings on Steve Cox to punt for the fourth time. Billy Johnson for the fifth time. Johnson back at the 24-yard line. Good punt. A little tiny from the turn, though, Norman. Forty-nine yard punt, two on the return for Johnson. Next Saturday, college football again on CBS. Ohio State first visit ever to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to take on LSU. That's live at two thirty Eastern time. You, you know, I never UCLA team. I never there? had to go down there. Thank heavens. Now, that is a pit to go into. <laughs> I guess that place in Death Valley, Clemson's home yeah. arena, the two toughest. Seattle, yeah, Washington is really tough to go into and win. That's too. right. Yeah, really tough. Husky Stadium. Yeah. Gerald Riggs and Kenny Flowers open up in the backfield. Riggs gets the handoff and comes left. See how he keeps his legs going? If you don't tackle his legs, you have him in the hips and the shoulder pads. He keeps those legs going. Even though it looks like it's going to be minus two, he ends up with a plus game. For the day now, 84 yards on 11 carries. The big gallop was a 44-yarder. That did not lead to anything in the second quarter. The Falcons ultimately had to go for a fourth and one. Trailed St. Louis by a game and a half, but the Cards are losing to Chicago and the Mets lead Pittsburgh in the National League East. Campbell, deep right side, man coverage incomplete. Good coverage, good coverage. That impossible to complete that one. Daryl Green right on him, shoulder to shoulder. Leonard Mitchell, Dick's former player at Philadelphia, is going up against Charles Mann today. All 300 pounds of him. Right to the top of your screen, number 73, going against Charles Mann. And Charles Mann told us last night, he said, Coach, I'm not going to try to whip that big guy physically. I've got to use moves on him. But right there, he's trying to take him on physically. Looks like he had uh, good use of his hands. <laughs> on play. They all use their hands. Third down. Shotgun, they try to hand off, it comes left, it doesn't work. Steve Griffin, number 32, the rookie. You know, the Redskins are at best with their offense when they ball control you and run that ball past 30 times, 40 times, and they've got to get running the football. Rick Donnelly is on the punt. Eric Yarber will return it. Donnelly's fourth punt of the afternoon. He's had a good day. He's booming it out there. He's got one. He's got it going. Only Donnelly to 
feet. And he can't beat Donnelly. And that saves the touchdown. God, a punter made a tackle or got a hit. I got to revive you. Yarber does a nice job in taking the ball. He gets a little block. He gets it tucked away nicely. He starts upfield to set the wall. Set the wall inside. Drew him in there. You see Buddy Curry's now turning the run to the outside. He hit that lane. Got a block right there. Here he goes. Now watch the punter. Donnelly coming right there. Got a piece of him. Got a piece. He spun off that. Here comes Buddy Curry to fend him off. Good job by Yarber. 51-yard punt. 33 on the return. And Donnelly is down. 13 to go. First down for Washington at the 42-yard line. 7-7 ball game. They hand it off to Kelvin Bryant. And Bryant chugs down to the 35-yard line. Buddy Curry and Reggie Wilkes collaborate on the tackle. There's Rick Donnelly who came off favoring his right leg and trying to walk off the pain right now. Let's take a look and see if you can determine what happened. Curry is in a, getting himself in a position. You'll notice right there he leans back and maybe got a little pressure on the right or left leg there. Maybe even the left one in that situation and strained a little bit. We'll see if he's able to punt. That's not in his contract to make tackles, is it? Uh, I don't think so. Second down and three. First down to the 30-yard line. This is, Dick, by the way, the best field position for Washington by more than 30 yards. It is. It's been, this is the first time they've had an opportunity to really go after him. And you know, when the Redskins run the ball, 30 rushes or more, they're 21 and 1. When they haven't been able to run, they've only won four times. When they've run less than 30 times, they've got to get that running game going. They've got a first down and 10 at the 30. There's a graphic. That holds up through the league. They're pretty close to that, really. Mm -hmm. They'll try to run the game again. Bryant, oh, good run. Nice run of a right guard. Thielman and Ed Simmons. Number 69 and 76 on the right side. Open the hole. Right center of your screen. Thielman, number 69, coming off the ball. Comes out, gets a good pickup block right there on the linebacker. John Reddy, number 59. Reddy reverse pivots and comes back in and gets the play but not after a good game good offensive line surge ball just inside the 23 it'll be second down four seven seven ball game 10 20 to go third quarter Bryant again and that's close for the first down at the 20 yard line don't think he got enough for the first down real good offensive surge by Russ Grimm the center on Tony Casillas the big nose tackle 75 he got him off the ball if you can get the nose guard off the ball you can run inside against the 30 defense show you what we mean by that you watch the offensive line in this case the offensive center coming off the ball and get good movement here he goes coming off he gets him knocked off the ball getting a little help there see that hole burn you could run up in there and make four yards good job Kelvin no, you overestimate my abilities. I thought you had good moves. <laughs> That's only on Friday night. Third and one. <laughs> Griffin puts his shoulder down and appears to have gotten enough. You know what happened on that? Griffin started cutting back, seeing the daylight before the exchange, and he and the big quarterback, Doug Williams, almost made contact in the backfield. It sort of broke the rhythm of that run. You'll see what I mean from the end zone here. See the tailback coming over. You'll see the quarterback, and he get a little fouled up on the mesh. New quarterback, new running back. See him bump into there? That really distracts him from making his cutback. First and 10, Williams makes right, looks left, good coverage. And at the end zone, oh. touchdown. Woo. Gary Clark. There's when the experience really is worth $450,000 a year. He surveyed the whole field. He wanted to go one way, didn't like it, came back with the other way. Offensive line still doing a good job. Came all the way back across the field. Awareness of where his people were. Touchdown. That's the second touchdown of the day for Doug Williams. Four on the season. I'll tell you what, Joe Gibbs had given his paycheck if he knew he was going to throw that one. <laughs> Hodge is deep, bad snap again. Yarber rolls out, tries to get rid of it, and can't. Who's making that snap? Normally, Jeff Bostix is the snapper, and he's one of the best snappers I have ever seen. Been happy. 
having problems today. Yeah. Thirteen to seven after the unsuccessful PAT. Here the ball is, the middle of your screen, coming over for the touchdown. You can't believe, fans, what concentration and awareness it takes for a quarterback to use a total field like he just did. Redskins have the lead again. Bad snap on the extra point attempt cost Washington that point, but they still have a six-point lead, 13 to seven, with 8.54 to go third quarter. Touchdown toss from Doug Williams to Gary Clark. I tell you, the new special teams coach for the Washington Redskins, Chuck Banker, is probably having a heart attack right about now. The Redskins have never had many foul-ups in their special teams, and this is a bad day for them so far. Cox, that will not be returned. Sylvester Stamps says will take it at the 20. A 33-yard punt return set up the touchdown drive. Eric Yarber. Returned it, and then 42 yards later, into the end zone, a 19-yard pass from Doug Williams to Gary Clark after six plays had elapsed, three minutes and 19 seconds on the clock. Washington with 22 minutes and 26 seconds. And that's their, that's their kind of football. Mm -hmm. They love to play that kind of football. But Dan Henning had a ball to throw offense when he was here. Has uh, Marion gotten away from that a little bit? No, they're actually running the very same offense, or very close to it, just called a little different. Uh -huh. First and 10, Scott Campbell is 9 of 23 for 140 yards and a throw on first down. Incomplete, just let his receiver a fraction too much. God, you never want to leave a receiver out to dry or strung out like that going in for those slant patterns. You got to put it right there at the numbers. Let him catch it with his hands. Come back to tie up Cleveland and Miami rolling over Getting Indianapolis. Indianapolis huh? Green Bay. Hey, Horace got him going. <laughs> they made a quarterback change. Don Mikowski is the quarterback. That's right. He started the game. 49ers have now scored. Narrowed the margin 20 to 14. Second and 10. Atlanta, they trail by six. 8.46 to go, third quarter. Wisenhunt has a first down plus and is knocked off his feet at the 46. That's a 26 yard gain. Kurt Gavea made the tackle. Wisenhunt was the H back man in motion, came started across the form H. He starts as a fullback, he shifts out of the fullback position. See him move to the wing back position. He's their H back. He'll now start in motion toward the center of the formation to get a defensive shift. Now he'll wheel back around. Now he goes up and across. Does a nice job of cross formation underneath the zone coverage right there. Gets underneath Maccabea right there. Kurt Cabea, rather. First down. 26-yard gain. Rigs up the middle. Across midfield to the 49-yard line. Dean Hamill, number 78, who is playing in place of Daryl Grant, and Alvin Walton, number 40, make the tackle. You know, Riggs is the kind of guy, if you keep giving him the ball, he doesn't get tired, he gets stronger. That's true of all good running backs, isn't it? Especially if they're on the big side, if mm -hmm. they're on the plus 215 side. They, they take a pound and they get going, they get in the rhythm of it. And plus, you know, they get a breather. So they throw a pass and that, that stuff, especially in the one-back attack, they're not out in the pass off that offense that much. Second down and six, Atlanta, 7.24 to go, third quarter. Arthur Cox starts in motion. Pitch out, Riggs bobbles the ball, fumbles it, picks it up, and scoots out of bounds in total embarrassment. That's why they don't use him in the passing attack. Number 74, in this case, Marcus Cook almost gets a knee injury on this play. He gets clipped from behind. The ball is tossed to the left side of your right, right side of the screen. He got clipped right there. He got up. Here is bobbling the ball. Look at he wanted to run with it before he put it away. Riggs will sit this one out. It'll be third and four. Atlanta's only two of eight on third down conversions. Washington threatens the blitz. They're coming. Campbell runs for his life. And he's sacked. Flag is down after Steve Hamilton made the tackle. Personal foul? 
Look at, look at Joe. Look at Joe. He can't believe it, he's saying. You can see that they have everybody up. There's only guys back here, everyone up here, and they're going to come after them with people up inside. They're all lined up there. This makes a young quarterback. Look at him. Here they come. Inside linebacker, 51 money, Coleman, right in his face. He reverse pivots. The quarterback does. Starts up. Going to run a little bit now. Boom. Down he goes. Yeah, late hit. Late hit. Too much enthusiasm. They did get the sack, and that's 52 games in succession with at least one sack. Currently the best record. The league record is 68. But the penalty cost him, and it's first down Atlanta. Riggs, the motion man. Blitz is blitz. coming again. Oh, Campbell is hit and gets it delivered. Good play by Scott Campbell. And Floyd Dixon makes the grab inside the 30. Todd Bowles, the uh, free safety, hit him just as he threw the football. Safety blitz. He didn't see it coming. You'll see the safety right here come in and give him a nice shot. Todd, good poise. Either that or he's just blind. Here he goes. He's dropping straight back. Here comes Todd following. Gets the gap. Wham! Right up underneath the chin. Still completed pass. Good job. Second down and one. Atlanta. They trail 13 to 7. With six minutes to go. Third quarter. Riggs shakes a tackle. Cuts it back up the middle. And has a first down inside the 25. Boy, is he a dandy. It's amazing how this guy can move, but he never really turns on his speed until he sees the daylight. Then he bursts for it. Great body, control, good balance, good forward body tilt. He's a brute. He's closing in on his 20th career game in which he's gained more than 100. He's got 93 right now. Well, he's averaged 130 yards a game, I think, against the Redskins. So. First and 10, Washington 5, or rather... the same thing. You're all in a different part of the field. They're playing copycat. Never held them back before. <laughs> no, that's for sure. <laughs> Here's Ben Dreit. First down. That's the illegal block above the waist. Marion Campbell and Rod Dowhauer got together this week and decided to make a change at quarterback. Scott Campbell got the start over David Archer. And on that last play, he went back and tossed his second TD of the day. This time he found Stacy Bailey for the second time in as many weeks. The extra point was good, and then he had a chance to celebrate. I'll tell you this. When a quarterback does something good, it's an opportunity for the coach to say, hey, I love you. You're getting better. Just keep coming, kiddo. <laughs> they look like wise men right now. And from the 10, here's Washington with a play fake. Little hitch. Gary Clark upended. 
Isn't it funny how a tackle like that will ignite the crowd and the team? Plus, it's also the guy that missed the tackle the last time that pass was thrown in front of him, and a big game resulted. Just a little quick hitch pass, a little token fake to freeze the linebackers. You see what it did there. Now he catches the ball, good drive, good tackle. The few young people that play high school football saw that tackle. That's how to use those shoulder pads. Bobby Butler with the defensive play. It's second down and five from the 14. Art Monk in motion. He's only caught one today. Little trap play up the middle. Stuffed at the 15. Tony Casillas, the nose tackle, number 75. Made the stop. Another of the number one draft choices. 80 yards in eight plays. Camel's second TD pass of the day. And a big penalty in the middle that gives him the first down. Right. Four receivers set now for the Redskins. On third and four from the 15, Washington now five of 10 on third down conversions. You've really got to be careful throwing down here and throwing that four and five yard game. Straight drop back by Williams. Caught. Ricky Sanders has the first down at the 22. David Crudup and Robert Moore with the defensive job. Clock shows 327 and going down. That's in the third quarter. Williams now 14 of 24, but only for a modest 142 yards. Ed Simmons is the rookie from Eastern Washington who is starting in the spot normally occupied by Mark May. He's another of the injured starters on the reserve list. For it's the just Redskins. amazing the Redskins can play so well like they did last week and play so well today with all the starters they have out. First and 10, Washington, 14-13, they trail. Kelvin Bryant tries to come right. Robert Moore does a good job of funneling that play back to the inside. I think they had a formation screw up there because they tried to run outside with no one there to block. So they must have had a formation alignment. And I see that uh, Doug was really upset after the play. First of our double headers for a double header games for you today. Coming up next, the Cowboys against the Giants from East Rutherford. No, the last time Dallas was 0-2, 1963. I was coaching high school football. <laughs> I was in high school. <laughs> okay, not quite. Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get you on that one. <laughs> Second and ten. Williams lobs it over the middle, incomplete. Don Warren wasn't looking for it. He just didn't want to take the sack. It was a good move. He didn't want to take the sack. He was back there. They had good outside pressure on him. He stepped up and just got rid of it. Third and ten is a lot better than third and fifteen. Look at the signals here. Either he's got ants in his pants or that's the play. Yeah, if the last one hit the belly, that means get the ball down the gut. <laughs> okay. 49ers have scored again. Field goal. It's 20 to 17. And here comes Doug Williams. Third and ten. And this is where the Atlanta Falcons were so miserable in defense last week in third and round. Four-man run, no blitz indications, and then I put him. Pass left side, caught. That's another first down for the Redskins. Ricky Sanders in front of Bobby Butler. Good pass protection. You know, playing left tackle right now is... Dan McQuaid, number 60, evidently. Jacoby went Jacoby out with a spring got back. Hurt. Yeah. Here it is. Good protection. He steps up in there. Nice. Brian, number 77, almost bats it back. Spins away. Almost gets loose again. Good tackle. 134 to go. Third quarter. 14-13. Atlanta leads. Kelvin Bryant flags fly. And Bryant is finally dropped down. Brought down after an 11-yard game. We just complimented Ed Simmons, and I think he was offside. I think he moved a little early. You notice both offensive teams are sort of gaining momentum. Mm -hmm. Offense, illegal motion, right guard, five yard penalty, first down. Mentioned back in the first half that Atlanta had problems defensing third down against Tampa Bay. 14 of 16, the Buccaneers converted with an average uh, need of 5.8. <laughs> Today, they're what, 7 to 12? Washington is 7 to 12. That's a better percentage for the defense, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a good percentage offensively. Very good. What do you aim for? 
50%. The league average last year was 37.5. Oh. The best was Miami at just a little over 50%. First and 15. Keith Griffin, big hole. Griffin, who sparked the victory last week with a 54-yard kickoff return. Tackled by Joel Williams and Wendell Casey for Atlanta. Nice run, well-executed play. It's the best play the Atlanta Falcons run. He's going to take a timing step to freeze the linebackers and give both linemen time to get around and lead the play. Well-executed. Linebackers are plus. See the timing step. Slow down the linebackers. Now he picks out. Here comes a guard, McQuaid, 60 right through. Gets a knockdown block. Keith Griffin, first down. Not quite, Dick. Second down and two. Missed it, huh? Yep, just a little bit. But he got it this time. Oh, and he skipped Super through for this Super year. running. Did you see him scissor step up? That's how they used to do it in the old days, when they wore leather helmets. <laughs> no, really, you see that hurdle move? That uh -huh. was he gave him only one leg to tackle. Looked like the Heisman. Nice pose for the trophy. It's a first down for the Redskins. The end of the third quarter with our score, 14-13 Atlanta. You'll notice the pullback on that last running play started in motion, then went back in the opposite direction. The defense shifted over to get with him, opened up a little crack, and then Griffin turned loose with that fine running ability. Now see this? Now watch the defense shift. Now they shift over to get over there and position the defense, the strong side formation. Scissor step, slides through. Look at him slide through there. Nice running. First down and 10, Washington as we start the final quarter. They'll do the reverse. Art Monk, who looked like for a moment he wanted to throw it. Now he is in trouble and caught for a loss. He did want to throw it. He wanted to throw it to Gary Clark downfield. And Bobby Butler was downfield covering Gary Clark. Art Monk has done that successfully in the past. He has one run this year for five yards. But he has done it. He had four runs last year for 27 yards. That was a run pass option. Mm -hmm. Pass first. Bobby Butler never got uh, taken on the play. And he was with Gary Clark down around the 10-yard line. Seven-year veteran should not be beaten on that. Plus, his wife just had their first baby this past week, and he's got to play well. He's got to support more than one. Now. It's been the rage in Atlanta, hasn't it? Three, Three children born this week? Three born this week. I wonder what the weather was like a few months ago. Oh, second down. <laughs> and Williams goes deep. Wide open. Calvin Bryant inside the 15 at the 13-yard line. A great throw. A great throw. Look at, he is excited. Kelvin Bryant right here comes out and runs a seam pass. Follow him, you'll see him late in the three play. Now look at Doug, looks left, keeps the safety to the left, comes back down the seam, super throw right where it had to be. Tough for a linebacker, 59 to cover that. That was John Rady trying to catch up. This drive of the Redskins started at the 10 yard line. stymied with a third and ten, but Ricky Sanders made the catch for a gain of 13. Now it's first and ten at the 13-yard line. Kelvin Bryant dodges to the outside and is hit from behind and driven down at the ten. John Rady, number 59, makes the stop with help from Reggie Wilkes. Kelvin Bryant only carried the ball 69 times the whole season last year. He's been injury prone, and, and Joe, again, Coach Gibbs sort of inferred last night, if this guy ever gets totally healthy, we've got a great running back, but we just can't overuse him because we don't have him 100% healthy. Well, he's signaling to the bench to come out right now. Yes, darn it. And Keith Griffin comes in. That's what Joe said about Griffin. He's always there when I need him. Second down and seven. 14-13. Atlanta leads currently with 12.44 to go, but the Redskins well within field goal range. And they have a second and eight. They may not want to snap that ball again in field goal formation. Draw play. Deep Griffin. Turns it upfield inside the 10 to the 7. John Rady and Wendell Kaysen with the tackle. See the signals here? Mm -hmm. Flip flop. <laughs> I don't know. The last signal must mean bad breath. You see that? I don't know what it means. Either that or there's a Chinese takeout in the end zone. <laughs> Four wide receivers set now for the Redskins, and Atlanta reacts defensively by sending in six defensive backs. 12-04 to go in the ballgame. You know, the Redskins could run in this situation. I've seen them do it many times. Third and three. A lot of time. Williams. Touchdown! Art Monk. Art 
Monk gets his second of the season. A lot of time. His third, I beg your pardon. Quiet for most of the day, and a 90-yard drive engineered by Doug Williams. Art Monk does a real good job of coming out on this. I think he's lined up to the right center. I can't see myself right here. Here he comes, coming off. Now he works back inside, right in the middle of your screen. There he is. Boom. Touchdown. Looks like he was tangled up with Joel Williams and got free from that. And now the snap is good, the hold is good, and the extra point is good. Doug Williams is having some fun. Yes, he is. He's excited. Look at him here. <laughs> He's thrown for three today. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. This and player profiles and more Monday on Eyewitness News at 5. Despite 73 catches last season, Art Monk had only four touchdowns. Now he has three for the season in 1987. Two last week and the go-ahead toss just a moment ago. Was a 90 yard drive for the Redskins, and that'll be a touchdown. Yep. Take a look again at that touchdown pass. This is how important protection is. Art Monk right here working on a linebacker. He comes down here, works on him a little bit physically, and then works his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Good protection is the key. It takes time for this to happen. Now he's working on Joel Williams, the only linebacker on the field in the nickel defense, and see, he worked him over. If there'd been more pressure, he wouldn't have been able to step inside and find the hole to throw the football. Touchdown. That's three touchdowns in the afternoon for Doug Williams, five for the season. And it's first and ten for Scott Campbell and the Atlanta Falcons. Campbell has thrown for two himself. Play fake. Pump short, little hitch and go. Interception. Now, Todd Bowles didn't hang on to it. Good reaction by Todd Bowles. That's the one negative about rolling out as a quarterback to throw the football. That brings the free safety from the inside of the field out in your direction. And when you throw the ball, you already have a running jump on the ball, and you can cover a lot of ground. That ball could have been picked easily. Just under 200 yards for Scott Campbell for the day, been intercepted once. He threw for 224 the last time he played against the Redskins. Dexter Manley comes on defensively now for the Redskins. Boy, second down and pick. Do they need him? People do make a difference. Straight drop back by Campbell. Almost picked off. Intended for Floyd Dixon and Kurt Gavea, the middle linebacker from Hawaii and Brigham Young. It's all right to try to catch the ball with your body on a curl pattern as you come back to it, but you've got to draw the ball to your body with your hands. See, the ball hit his body first, mm -hmm. and then the impact of any defensive man just pushes the ball and bounces off you. You've got to draw the ball to your body with your hands. That gave Gavea the chance, which he was unable to capitalize on. Now three receivers come in, Aubrey Matthews, Steve Griffin, Sylvester Stamps in the backfield. And out of the shotgun, here come the Falcons on third and ten. Deep right side, Stacy Bailey over the shoulder, catch, good! Floyd Dixon instead. Stacy Bailey isolated on Tim Morrison, number 41, right in the middle of your screen, bump and run technique. Well, that's Floyd Dixon, number 86, not Bailey. He takes it inside there, gives him a little post move just to get a, a little break, a little separation. Ball thrown right where it had to be. Well executed play. And he beat Tim Morrison, who missed last week's game with an injury, but is in the defensive backfield now. There's Dixon. On third and ten, that's a gain of 33 yards. And now they're going to check the last play for an interpretation by the replay officials. They thought he might have been out of bounds, or at least someone's uh, requesting that. I thought he was in. Let's take another look at that. You can see it down to the bottom right-hand side of your screen. One foot in. It's hard to tell. There's some red shirts right there in the way. Did, in zone, we might upstairs. be able to see it. They said the play stood. One foot, two foot. Yeah, he's definitely in. One knee equals two feet. Right? Yeah, so Coach Madden. Yeah, the old Madden rule. That's a first down on a 33-yard game. Falcons trail by six, 20 to 14. 
Wisner comes in motion right side. Campbell gets rid of it quickly over the top. No flag. Ooh. Yes, here comes yeah. one. Took him a while to get it out of his pocket. That slant pass, they've used that slant on first down about three times and haven't completed it. That time he came over the top. Maybe got there a little early. Daryl Green. Defense, pass in the first 29. That's a first down. It is 28, Daryl Green, instead yes. of 49. Slant pattern. He doesn't like the call. He thought he played good defense. Ball moving to the right side. Here it is, right there. Oh, can't quite get it. Receiver gets up, in this case, Dixon does a good job of acting. From the 33, first and 10, 11.20 to go. 20 to 14 Redskins. Gerald Riggs goes left. Some struggles for two. I'll tell you, taking Riggs and trying to run him outside is almost a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Not that he can't, but he's so effective running tackle to tackle. Riggs now with 94 yards on 15 carries. And we're under the 11 minute mark. Philadelphia leading New Orleans by 10. 49ers have come back now and tied up Cincinnati. They trailed 20 to 7 at one point. And Miami continues to lead Indianapolis. Don't forget Dallas and New York next on most of these CBS stations. Second down and nine from the 32. Four man Redskin rush. Campbell has a receiver at the 25, short of the first down. Dixon again. And he and Barry Wilburn get into it. Floyd Dixon, you're at five foot eight and a half, five foot nine. Better not argue with too many guys. That's right. He may be quick, but you're standing there toe to toe. Marion Campbell. You know him so well, and I know you felt all week long when we chatted that Atlanta would play well today. Well, so unlike a very coach defense the last week to give up that many points, it's not going to happen again. Dixon has now caught five for 105 yards. Third and two. They give it to Riggs up the middle. First down, Atlanta at the 21. Wilson Hutt, number 45. The H-back did a nice job of coming in and trapping the nose. Here's Wilson Hutt. Now you're going to see him come in and get the trap lock. So watch him follow him as he comes in motion. Here he comes. One, two, three. Boom. Now watch him. Oh, butts right there. Number 65 creates that little seam, gets the shoulders, gets him started. First down. They give him the 20-yard line, and there is 14-year veteran Dave Butts. Kenny Flowers comes into the Atlanta backfield. They will go with a two-back set now, which they've been working on in preseason. Flowers, the rookie, second-round draft choice. Out of Clemson. This is the time to throw the ball in first down at that 20 yard line. It's really a good time. That's what they're going to do. Campbell has it. Stacy Bailey to the 11 yard line. Yeah. See, if you don't make it, you get to give you uh, two downs to get the other 10 yards, and you're also in good position for field goal. Campbell does a nice job here. Fern. Just straight drop back. Butts coming there right down to space, 65. Getting a little heat. Charles Mann right there. He throws it right through that passing lane. Did a nice job. Stacy Bailey went on in and then just rolled back outside. Good job. Second and one. Bailey has caught three for 45 yards. Scott Campbell is going to call timeout. He'll talk it over with Rod Dauhauer and Marion Campbell. The Falcons threaten. They trail by six. 22 to go in the ball game. 50,800 on hand here at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium, and they have enjoyed what they've seen thus far. And thus far, Washington has gained 344 yards. Atlanta 343. Close enough, huh? Riggs just a yard shy of 100 yards, and Doug Williams has thrown three touchdown passes so far. I keep going back to what you said, though. You 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 really thought that Atlanta would come in and play well, and Joe Gibbs was very worried about that. Well, Joe Gibbs told us that. Plus, I mean, you just know because of the reputation of Marion Campbell throughout the whole league that it's going to be a tight football game, and that's what we've got. We've got Atlanta at the 11-yard line trailing by six. And a second down and one. Riggs up the middle. First and goal at the six. Yeah. Nice play by Wissenhut again. They're running up inside. That's the best place to keep Riggs running. Right up inside. Wissenhut, though, H-back coming in motion again. He's going to come in, and he's going to get a motion crackback following. Just follow him now. 
coming in motion. Here he comes. Wham! Right up inside there on the linebacker, Monty Coleman, or Mel Coffin, number 55. Good job. Washington took the lead with a 90-yard drive early in this quarter. Now it's first and goal, Atlanta. Riggs again. Tests the middle, goes left, and is down at the three. Bill Fralick down on the ground, number 79. 7.34, and the clock running. Gets a little tough to run inside now because they start going to taking those big defensive linemen and slant them into the gaps and just trying to funnel you to the outside so the linebackers can move inside out on it and make the play. And you stop and look at the Butzes and the Grants and the Dean Hamels and the size of those people inside, and they're taking a gap rather than taking a player on. Tough to run in there. Ron Middleton has come in as an extra tight end, so there are three in now, and Kenny Flowers an extra running back. Split backs behind Scott Campbell on second and goal. Watch for play action pass. There it is. They look deep in the end zone for Middleton, but he's well covered, and Campbell has to freelance. Now finds a man open. Overthrows Wizard on the end zone. Arthur Cox all the way back at the other flag was all alone. See, if you're going to throw the ball in that situation, you've got to do it on second down. You wait for third down, you don't fool anybody. Mm -hmm. But it's good defense by the Redskins. Very good defense. <laughs> Wilson Hutt was covered initially. Now watch him fight to get over as the quarterback starts moving around. He keeps looking for a place to get open. Now watch him work back. He's working back to the zone. He's looking. Hey, here I am. Throw me the ball. That's good effort. Good defense. Give the Skins credit. Now the uh, normal set with two wide receivers. Stacy Bailey back in the lineup. So is Dixon. Third and goal from the three. That's prison out in motion. Draw play up the middle. Riggs battles. Touchdown. Good call. releases. Leonard Mitchell sets deep to bring Mann upfield. Fralick sets short on Butts. Opens the lane up inside. Follow Mann. Number 71 come up outside. Here he goes. See the nice little lane open by the pass rush technique. It's got to be filled by the linebackers inside. Here's the kick from Nick Luckhurst. This will be returned. Griffin bobbles it. Picks it up at the 10. And pays the price at the 15. Jesse Puggle, a rookie from Valdosta State. Valdosta. Not a lot of guys in the league from there. Is Can't name two. <laughs> I talked to him the other day in the locker room, and he's really, he's just excited about being in the league, believe me. He's Darryl not worried about Riggs. the strike or anything. He just wants to play football. 20th time in his career that Riggs has gone over 100 yards. He had 17 yards on that 80-yard drive, which took 11 plays and consumed five minutes and one second. Riggs with a four-yard touchdown run. That equaled the longest touchdown run by Atlanta a year ago. Four yards is all. Doug Williams has thrown for three TDs for the Redskins. Lobs it out, right flat, caught at the 19. Glenn Dennison with the catch. We're at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, for the second week of the 1987 NFL season. Washington came in as heavy favorites and they now trail the Atlanta Falcons 21-20 with 6-16 to go in the clock county. Vern Lundquist along with Dick Vermeil. The difference in the game is a bobbled extra point. A bad snap from Jer Jeff Boston. Art Monk goes in motion. Draw play. Jelvin Bryant into the arms of John Rady. thing the Redskins won't do, Vern, is they won't panic. They will not panic. They'll pound at him. They think they'll, first off, they're going to think touchdown, but they have to get in, in position for Ollie for the field goal as well, but they won't just all of a sudden say, hey, we can't beat him. 
with the game plan that we have. We've got to do all these things. You know, they'll, they'll stick with their thoughts. from low angle. Maybe we can see. The, the ball will move to the left of the screen. Tony Casillas, it's 50 Buddy Curry filling right there, right up in the point of attack. Did a nice job. Casillas came off the block, put it. It's a tight measurement. Bobby Butler really liked this one. Look at him. Don't count your chickens before the hatch, buddy. <laughs> they measure. It's about four inches short. How much time left? What do you think? I think you got to punt it. You think you got to punt it. Casillas made the tackle. He comes to the sideline. Half that amount of time or three minutes to go, you probably go ahead and go with a fourth down. That's the best play Casillas has made. Buddy Curry was super on that for 50. Steve Cox has had a terrific day. Is on the punt for the sixth time. Billy Johnson waits at the 20. seen over the years get after you 53 yard punt Johnson counter punches seven yards 434 remaining in the game Atlanta leads all right Brent 434 remaining here 21 20 Dick you made a good point about the offensive scheme now for the Falcons during the break well the one thing you can't do now is say hey we're just going to hang on to the ball and power it and grind it out because uh, you may not make any yards trying to do that you've got to do Again, what you were doing real well to get those 80-yard drives. You get too conservative, the Redskins will have the ball right back. 112 yards for Gerald Riggs. Nobody else has carried the football for Atlanta today. There's only one ball. Might as well give it to him. They did. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the advantage of the one-back attack. You can give it to the best guy all the time. I know Dan Henning just sought the world of this guy. You know, the, the, the pass... Uh, Falcon coach, and I know this new staff thinks they're well with him, too. Dan Henning did a heck of a good job of coaching here. Really a good job. Dan Last Henning. Last year, especially. That's right. Finished 7-8-1 and a year ago and got fired. That's the nature of this game. Second down with just under four minutes to go. Play fake. Campbell rolling out, being chased by Marcus Cook. Big play. That's right. Risen on. First down at the 49. That's the sixth catch for Ken Wisenhunt today. Here's that same type of play we saw earlier. He's sitting right in here. Ken Wisenhunt, 45. Follow him now. He's going to sort of delay, block down. Remember we saw that earlier? Now allow the quarterback to roll out, get lost in the shuffle, come out every underneath everybody. Little bootleg action, 51. Monty Coleman coming after him, and boy, he can run. First down. Gain of 17 yards for Wisenhunt from Campbell. Good, good call. That's the, what I was talking about. You know, I have made the mistake as a head coach. I've got the one point or the, the three-point lead, and I said, guys, we're going to grind it out, make first downs, eat up the clock, and walk off the field with a win. And do that, and they go one run, two run, three run, punt. <laughs> the other outfit go field goal, win. Win. So yeah. uh, This is the first game of our doubleheader on CBS. Coming up next, most of you will see the Cowboys take on the New York Giants. Minnesota against the Rams. That's going to be a good football game. Minnesota is my sleeper. They are a good football team. Detroit will be in Los Angeles as well to take on the Raiders, and some of you will see St. Louis against San Diego. That's coming up next on CBS. We are in the final three and a half minutes of the second game of the season from Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta. Vern Lundquist along with Dick Vermeil. It was tied 7-7 at the half. 
Washington scored to go up 13-7, but Jeff Bostick's center on an extra point attempt was bad. Eric Yarber couldn't hold on. They never got the kick attempted. That is the difference in the game now as Atlanta has come back twice to go back on top. 14-13 and then 21-20. They have a fresh set of downs now with the first and 10. And Campbell to throw on first down. How about this? Riggs with the catch. See, that's just as good as a run but they're just going to get him the ball out there where there aren't as many people already mad at him lined up in a four-point stance. You know, <laughs> they get him out there where a guy, only maybe one guy gets his direct shot. He didn't catch many footballs last year. He's going to catch a little more, I think, in this attack. He looks downfield first, but he knows he has the outlet. See the quarterback's eyes looking downfield, then he just turns and lays it out there. Now he gets his shoulder pads. Now tuck that ball away. That's it. Hate to see a running back carry that ball out there like that. <laughs> Riggs gains six at second and four. The clock shows 251. Here comes the blitz. And Riggs is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Good call by Richie Pettibon. Game got him. Might as well get after him. Timeout has been called by Washington. 241 to go. You know, we were talking about Marion Campbell uh, and first-year head coaches. It's tough. You know, since 1970, Vern, 76 coaches have taken over losing situations, and only, only eight of them won their first year. It is really tough. How it about the really second year? Did you get any better? Yes, 14 of them won their second year, and the third year, if they didn't win, the rest of them got fired. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in... 17 guys in that same period of time took over winners and only nine of them kept them winning the first year. That first year is a banger. Marion Campbell, of course, recognized for his defensive schemes, and there's Richie Pettibone. Can you believe Richie big. used to be a strong safety? A uh, real good one. I remember when he played, but no, I can't believe it. <laughs> he's, been, he's been eating at the Alpine Inn there in uh, Washington, D.C. with that good pasta. <laughs> I want to I uh, check his time in the 40. <laughs> Well, he was a good football player. He's a hell of a football coach. 21-20, 241 to go. Third and four. Play fake. Campbell on the bootleg. First down, Atlanta. Everybody thinking inside. Quarterback's going to make the good, strong fake to the workhorse. Here he comes. Now watch the quarterback. Fakes a good, strong fake in there. Puts the ball out there on his left side. Harder to see. Defense coming inside out. He dies for that first down. He is really excited. You think he's happy. You should have seen the, the Atlanta coaching staff on the sideline. But the game is not won. I have seen so many times coaches and players start celebrating with two minutes to go hey, and get it handed to him before it's over. Well, we'll see what happens because that's what we have left. Two minutes. Former Indianapolis head coach Rod Dalhauer in the middle of your screen has executed or had, has called good plays in this drive, Dick. He's done an awful good job of keeping them off balance. I look for the, the Redskins to really come after him here now and try to create the big negative play. First and ten at the two-minute mark. Riggs. So they can low to the ground. They can afford to power at him, keep the running. The Redskins have one timeout left. Which they will apparently use right now, yes. A minute and 55 to go. Well, we said uh, three hours ago that Joe Gibbs was junk-jawed when we talked to him yesterday. He was again this morning and with reason. Well, I know that feeling. I've lived this same situation, and this guy is as good a football coach as there is in football. All the names included, this guy is in that category. But you, you are not bulletproof. You are going to get exposed to these situations and be in this losing situation from time to time. More often than not, though, he's going to come out the winner. Chicago rolling over Tampa Bay, 20 to 3. It was a Tampa Bay team which a week ago defeated this Atlanta outfit, 48 to 10. Can you believe that? I couldn't. Sellout crowd watching now on second down at five. Atlanta leads at 21-20. Ridge skips to the outside, cuts back, and gets to the 30-yard line, where it will be third and four. 
Monty Coleman makes the tackle. And the Redskins cannot stop the clock. If there is no strike, the Redskins face New England next week. You yeah. want to take any odds on that, do you? No, not at all. That's after, why talk, after talking to Nick Rutgers, I wouldn't bet a penny. That's why there was a big hit. Yeah. Third and three. With Atlanta leading 21-20. Play fake, bootleg again. Campbell pulls up, looks for help, and doesn't find it, and Marcus Cook knocks him down at the 32-yard line. Kept him from getting out of bounds. <laughs> And they're really in a no man's land in terms of uh, a field goal. Let's see if Luckhurst does come in. Yep, he's going to send him on. Yep. Mick Luckhurst kicked a 50 yarder last week. He and this is 49. From, the, from, in, from the 40 to 49, he is a 62% kicker. 35 of 56 in his career. He's 7 of 13 outside of 50. He's a good long distance kicker. Nope, they're going to short punch him. Okay. They're not going to go for the field goal. Clock now shows 40 seconds to go. Evidently, Donnelly's leg is back. So Luckhurst will punt. Oh, they got a mix up there. Delay of game call, which they don't mind at all. Yeah. Yeah. Donnelly earlier, the punter bruised his thigh making a tackle. Evidently, it's a little worse and therefore can't come in to punt. But now during practice, when 43 guys are, are going after each other on the practice field, don't both men practice punting? Does yeah. your field goal practice just... You don't let your field goal kicker practice punting very much because it can foul up his rhythm. It really is. It's like taking a golf swing and getting the rhythm real great and then trying a new swing altogether. You can screw up with how you make a living. You can't do it much. At least I don't think you can. Well, Luckhurst will try and pooch kick it. And he kicked it too hard. It goes into the end zone, and the Redskins will get it back at the 20 with 25 seconds left and no timeouts. I know the Redskins over the years have won more games when trailing going into the fourth quarter than they've lost. They've won 7-13, to 13, so they know how to come from behind, but with only 25 seconds left, that makes it tough, and Schrader can't even help him sitting there. Dave Laufenberg is right behind him, back for his third stint with the Redskins, signed this week. And here is Doug Williams, who has thrown for three touchdowns today. Using a three-man rush. Williams goes way downfield. Gary Clark intercepted, picked off by Tim Gordon, number 41, who was just signed after having been cut when they reduced the roster to 45. Signed this week, Tim Gordon. That will go on the uh, fireplace medal. You bet it will. Fred Burney, defensive secondary coach. Marion Campbell, head coach. Dennis Harrison here. Joe, I know the feeling. I've been there. It is the worst feeling. In fact, I cannot describe it. Got you out of coaching. Oh, well, it's unbelievable. This will be the final play because Washington cannot stop the clock. And in a monumental early season upset, Marion Campbell's Atlanta Falcons defeat Joe Gibbs' Washington Redskins by virtue of a missed 